Devil Point. A stuttering John Melendez roundtable discussion. Welcome to Point Devil Point, a weekly discussion where we get caught up on this week in stuttering John, get students in trouble for taking pictures, and neither conform nor deny if we're still obsessed with the dabbler. I'm Carl Hamburger, and with me this week, from the Blind Mike Project, why are you laughing and who are these socials? It's Blind Mike Geary. What's up, Mike? You said conform or deny, idiot. You fucked up your intro. Ah, I fucked up my intro. Damn it. All right, we'll fix it in post. Fair enough. i just get a few words in before Gino gets here. Also, from In Hot Water on Kappa Media and Keanu Cast, respectively, it's Gino Bisconte and Keanu Thompson. Hello. What is happening? That was the worst fuck up of speech language since the Melendez brothers killed their father. <laughs> <laughs> So you saw uh, Ray's roast then, is what you're telling me. Uh, I, I sit there with her going, I'm bitching. I'm like, why am I watching this? Why? I can't stop watching this. It's insane. But yes, I did. Yeah. All right. So we have a lot to discuss. I say this every week. I go, how is there so much going on in just seven days time that we have so many things? I have so many topics to talk about with Stuttering John. The news cycle is 24 hours with this guy. It's and <laughs> I have to say, I'm really excited to have Keanu on the show because you got in the middle of it yesterday. I did not mean, intend to. I know. <laughs> but oh, I'm, I am aware. These things go. <laughs> Typical crunt answer. <laughs> <laughs> so, I assume that's who you wanted when you texted me and you just didn't have her sell. I'm like, yeah. I'll I don't. Here. I don't have Keanu sell. So, yes, thank you for, uh, for getting her on board for the show today. So, we have, a, so we have a lot to discuss on that, but I got to back up. We'll get to all of that. I have a lot of questions and a lot of thoughts on this, but I have to back up first because it's unbelievable. But since the last point dabble point, we discovered no lawsuit was filed against Vince the loser. And you would think that this is like the oldest news possible, but we learned about it after point dabble point last week. That that man is haunting. He's so haunting. Isn't he just very creepy? You, you mean the man who lacks charisma, Vince? <laughs> yes. Yes, he does have the uh, the dead shark eyes. Yeah. That is a little I, bit disturbing. And I, I'll never understand the relationship between those two. I don't get, like, does he hate him? Is he his best friend? Is he trying to kill him? Is he trying to save his... I don't get that dynamic. I actually do understand the dynamic, only because I know Vince's dynamic with High Pitch Eric. Ah, oh, And it's okay. pretty much the same. Yeah. Wow. John would be very insulted by that, but it's clearly the case. Yes. <laughs> no, it's 100% the case. Yeah. John is more of a whack packer than any other whack packer at this point, whether oh, he wants yeah. to acknowledge that or not. And that's what Vince loves. Vince loves manipulating John because you'll see he'll go in on John's show with two different strategies. One is to kiss John's ass and tell him how amazing he is and how everyone else sucks. Yeah. And then the other one is to give John some real truth and facts and see how long he can stay on the show doing that without John kicking him out. Because John doesn't want anyone on his show that disagrees with him, obviously. <laughs> but the funny part is, like, you would think uh, John's a, a, a grown man. You would think, like, for all the times he shits on him and John gets mad at him, sure, that makes sense. But when he's being nice to him, shouldn't he be like, I don't know if he's being honest with me. <laughs> Wait <right> a <laughs> second. <laughs> <laughs> yes. it, it is, it's, a, it's a symbiotic relationship, though, because John desperately needs a friend. Like, that's why when he had you on the show, Gino, he thought like, oh, maybe me and Gino can be friends now. Same with Keanu. Yeah. I think same with Carl, honestly. Yeah. When he had Carl on, he's like, these can be my friends now. And Vince is the only guy that keeps coming back to him. So I think John needs that. And obviously Vince needs John for attention. So they need each other. Well, somebody well, that goes through your luggage in a hotel room, I would venture to say probably isn't really a good friend of yours no. or, you know, <laughs> flies you three hours away from your destination. So you have to take a bus. These are not friendly acts, but. I don't know. No, I, as I've told John many times, Vince is always trolling him. And whether or not Jen wants to acknowledge that, sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. But you're right, he's desperate for a friend. And it couldn't have come out better than when they were sitting in Vince's suite in Atlantic City. And John goes, Vince, wouldn't you say I'm your best friend in the Dabbleverse? <laughs> I don't know. There's no amount of alcohol that would get me to ask someone if they were my friend or not. Are you my friend? <laughs> Are we, we're, we're, we're good friends, right? And not only friends, but 
best friends. Best friends. <laughs> a 58 year old man asking if they're best friends. Yes, I don't want to blow it, but would you say best? <laughs> <laughs> One and only. <laughs> so now, uh, John didn't file the lawsuit because he claims he went downtown to the court to file it. And they said, you can't do that. You can't sue someone in New York from LA, stupid. <laughs> You got to find an attorney in New That's York exactly to do that. They said, yeah, <laughs> but but he didn't make that. He's lying. He didn't drive down to the courthouse to find this out. This, that would be the dumbest thing ever. No. So I'm, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say he's lying about that. There's no yes. way he did that. But then he comes on his show, you know, and he talked to Vince about it and he's all upset. And then he comes on his show because Saturday he was bedridden. And I, I want to talk about my health concerns for John, but uh, we'll table that for a second. So. Then he comes on on Monday's show and says, I was going to file the lawsuit today, but I'm just too tired. Sure. Okay. <laughs> so he still hasn't filed the lawsuit. Now, remember, this lawsuit is the dumbest idea he's ever had now, that anyone's yeah. ever had. Wow. That is a bold statement. Carl. <laughs> it is. That is but, a... but Gino, do you know the parameters? The dumbest bet I ever put in, Carl. <laughs> But do you know the parameters of this, though? Do you understand what the parameters of this lawsuit are? I, I really, I honestly don't. Like, I just, yeah. my mind turns to jelly when you're listening to him. <laughs> Let me explain it. Please. He is going to sue Vince the Lawyer because he claims Vince the Lawyer is muttering Jay on Twitter. Oh and because God. he's going to sue Vince the Lawyer for being muttering Jay, Vince will be forced to sue me and Shuli, who are the ones who told John that Vince was muttering Jay. What is Why? illegal about having a nom de plume? Yeah. I don't the, really. The look on both of your faces was what I was hoping. That was what? the reaction I was hoping I was going to get when I explained that to because you. You're trying to connect the dots, and it's like <laughs> it's like it's like when you Google Map and say, "Hey, how do I get from uh, Kansas City to London?" And it's like, "What you, you have to?" All this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, "Are you stupid? You buy a plane ticket." And he's like, "And obviously that will cause them to sue Shirley." What are you talking about? Yes, it's the perfect plan. <laughs> So well, it doesn't help that the heist is all on John's YouTube. Also, he's like, all right, Vince, I'm going to sue call, but you got to sue him for whatever the fuck it is. Yeah, he's, he's explained on his show many times that he doesn't think that Vince is muttering Jay, but he still is going to sue him for being muttering Jay. Yeah, so like that he has to sue me. Everyone has to turn the key. You got to turn the key. <laughs> <laughs> but. But this is why this is the brilliance of, and I use the word brilliance. And I'll take it back immediately. This is what uh, Vince the loser does is he manipulates John into acting like a buffoon. And sometimes it benefits all of us in the case of this lawsuit, for sure. And then sometimes it's annoying, like when he's just sending people to his house all the time with deliveries of N.A. beer and Magnum condoms, which yeah. John has no use for either of those things. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, a waste of time for for everyone involved. I, I think that's brilliant. <laughs> that's a, okay. That's not bad. That's, that's kind of fun. <laughs> that's kind of fun. I think the dumbest thing John ever said was, "Don't worry, I disconnected the phones." And then it became <laughs> a half hour of him yelling at his mother, "Where's that phone, Mom?" You don't think that might have been a little dumber when he said, "Don't worry, perfect crime." Just. I, I love that he was mad at his mom for having so many phones. <laughs> There's one upstairs too, Ma. <laughs> You got to you got to answer the phone when you're in your room. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do, Jen. That is true. Uh, I want to thank Brandon Metzler for becoming a new member. Thank you very much. Uh, Bob doing a COVID test for two bucks says I I saw Keanu's butthole on Google. Not impressed. Not well, true. I repeat, not true. <laughs> it's not true. Yeah, you were impressed. I think they're talking no, about me. I am on Google. I am her butthole. There are no pictures of buttholes of my butthole anywhere on the internet. EJ Two Bucks says Keanu was amazing handling John yesterday. Go Bills. Yes, <laughs> we will definitely get into all of that. Uh, I did get caught up and saw the Keanu cast that happened afterwards. So uh, th that was a inter very interesting. So you went from our, the Army Major. Richard Ojeda, it's Ojeda, John. He says it himself. It's Ojeda. It's not Ojeda. It's Ojeda. <laughs> Ojeda. And then he had on Ian Helperin. If anyone who's uh, an old O and A fan knows, uh, Google it himself. Ian. Can I just so, say what's amazing? I've seen Ian on John's show a couple times, and Ian's entire shtick, I think, even if you asked him, is that he's a bizarre character. Like he's supposed to be a weird guy. And yeah. on John's show, he's the straight man, which is. <laughs> 
saying it speaks something. volumes about John. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> someone's got to turn this into a real conversation. I guess I'll do it. <laughs> Uh, James R for two bucks says, please send Tukey, aka fake Gino, the link. Oh, he I should... was brilliant on that roast last night. My g- God. Well, he wasn't. Yes. Uh, Tukey mask. Tukey was... mask. Right. <laughs> he was literally saying, My pancreas. My pancreas. I, oh, by the way, works. I should put on that shirt. He sent me one. It is so fucking. Oh, great. yeah. The, uh, I'm Gino Bisconti, professional comedian. Thank you very <laughs> much. I am indeed. <laughs> So funny. I now I've I've never done a Gino impression. Now I do a Gino impression, but it's just Rocco's impression of Gino. <laughs> it's we so- don't care that your kids are trans, John. We talk about it because it drives you crazy. Somebody it drives said- you N U T S crazy, John. N U T S crazy. It was. He lost his three days later. He still didn't have a voice, and he came on Michael. <laughs> it's not easy, baby. And someone said it perfectly. It's. You would think his impersonation of me is is damn near perfect. Set the speed to 1.5 on that video. And it is, you're like, oh my God, I'm fired. It's I'm true. fired. It's the same guy. I love him. Uh, Miss Charlie Loves, two bucks, says, Gino, thoughts on OJ calling you a puss? OJ is lame. <laughs> when you're sitting there talking to an orange, yeah. trying to fucking be like, look, he didn't square up. And then you're like, what am I doing? What am I doing? You're like, yeah, you're right, Mr. Orange. I uh, yeah. I, I should have expected Captain Adderall to whack me in the face. You're right. You can fuck an orange. <laughs> orange slice. <laughs> slice. I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> uh, Yank, Yankin Texan. Stuttering John, member for three months, says, Love you, Carl and Mike. Gino and Keanu, y'all are garbage stuff. Joe apologists. Oh, I want to get into that. <laughs> oh, damn it. I want to get into this friendship you guys that. have. Let's give him a chance. For being nice to a retard. Yeah, Excuse yeah. me. <laughs> for screaming at him when it goes Pocky. I'm like, Pocky, well, you yes. gotta, I'm like, you have to stop that. I'm like, the only guy that had you on after you quit being the head writer, the only guy, yeah, but no one cares, John. It felt no like one punching down to be evil to him. We can't be mean, <laughs> and whatever. I, I can't believe the way he reacted to you saying, I talk to him like he's a kindergartner. I think John, that's a pretty apt description of yes! John. I'm if, sorry. If, yes. John, if you said that about me, I'd go, I get it. All right, sure. You know, I'd like, be like, okay, yeah, no, I get it. It makes sense. I, I live it. I even said, I talk to a lot of men like kindergartners. You're not the only one. But, but John was so taken aback by that. Oh, like, God. he lost his mind over it. He that was. Thought, I mean, my God. I, I said the worst thing you could possibly say. He was not having it. No, no, no. I, I don't understand how John ever survived on the Stern show because his role there was to be a punching bag. Yeah. And it seems like every time, no matter the context, no matter how light or harsh it is, John reacts exactly the same to so, the slightest criticism. Like the Keanu wasn't the best. Like Missy was meaner than Keanu. Keanu was like, ah, he's kind of a, he can be a douchebag at times, but he's okay. I like him. I was trying it's to be the diplomatic. The I love this. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, they're my friends. They don't give a fuck about John. They laugh at him like many people do. I was trying to be diplomatic. Yeah. I called him a kindergartner. Oh, God. What are we going to do? John. Jesus. And I'm then, so sorry. Let me and then John sent an email to Gino to tantalize you. I want <laughs> you to know what your fiance was up to. What your property was very mean to me. <laughs> he, has, he, has, he has my number. He's called me before. He has what? my email. But a, a misogynist emails my betrothed. He got very offended by that word all of a sudden yes. as well. He scumbag has to betrothed. email my scumbag betrothed to tattle on me. But right. but hold on one second though, Keanu. Gino, seriously, get your woman in line. This is yeah. by the way, up. and that's the perfect. Like whenever people were texting the past couple weeks, but well, the way you let that guy talk to Keanu, I'm like Keanu can handle herself. And if oh, that yeah. wasn't underscored perfectly in the past 24 hours, and the other thing was you said it. I'm like. I go to Keon. I'm like, John emailed me. Did he? And she's like, no. And it's the same jackasses that live in this fantasy land when Kate Meany was crying about the fact she loves it. What, why didn't Gino make Keanu take that down? Why don't I call you guys or Joe Rogan and be like, you need to take down your video. I'm not Stop the host idiots. of Fear Factor or anything, but uh, I don't think he would take anything down either. Yeah, make Keanu take something down. You know, wait, wait, wait. Why don't you email me, John? Get your head out of your pussy and email me or give me a call. How about that? Oh, I've done it now. (laughs) Also, I heard there's photos of Barbara Streisand's house on the internet. We need to get those taken off as well, Kate Meany. (laughs) Fucking idiot. Can I ask something about Kate Meany? And I I need you guys' help on this because I don't see very well. 
How does suddenly Kate Meany become hotter than Keanu because oh. Keanu is <laughs> I, mean to Yes, John. that's one of my talking points in here is John is just like Kevin Brennan in that as soon as he's mad at you, everything yeah. he said that he liked about you, now he hates about you. Uh huh. Can I exactly. just say one thing? That's how a kindergartner would talk. Yes. Like, Susie, I think you smell like cootie. Then I like then I like uh, Jennifer now. I, I never like liked Jennifer. you anyway, you ugly whore. He's a kindergartner. <laughs> No, the, the funniest part, and we'll get into this whole interaction, but the funniest part about Keanu then co coming on John's show yesterday, apologizing to him, saying, I'm sorry I called you, you know, I said I talked to you like a kindergartner, and then John took you off screen and blocked you. Yeah. <laughs> How dare you? It's like, I'm immature. You're yeah. blocked. Yes. Yeah. I'll now I'm telling you, husband. Said, yeah, no, I'm gonna tell. He started mocking me. He was like, well, "Enough with the betrothals." I said, "Well, how shall I talk to you, John?" Then I started going, yeah. "Hey, John, how are you?" Like, yeah. and then he went, <laughs> he blocked me. Well, he took the, the, with me. I'm the sorry. irony is that John loves to bat around his English phrases all the time, as fucking hells and shagging girls, because he hangs yeah. out at the English pub. Right. And of course, you're gonna start talking like Madonna. If you're at a pub three hours a day we quit now <laughs> yeah right uh frankie mcdonald 666 two bucks says i found keanu's ring in gino's body cavity i don't oh, think that's thank true God. and he was really looking i don't think that's true uh miss charlie loves two bucks vtl scammed thousands from youtubers vtl was a youtube manager so i don't know anything about that but i believe it because when i've talked to vince this is going back a couple of years now he has a lot of ideas around YouTube strategies. And that was one of the first things he wanted to talk to me about. And uh, you can always tell when Vince is working behind the scenes on someone's channel because all the thumbnails start to look the same. Oh, interesting. Penis Renko, five bucks. Love Penis Renko. You admit to spilling your seed to a broad and all of a sudden she thinks you're trying to impress her. Get over it, Keanu. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm yeah, over it. Person. I'm over it. Oh, God. <laughs> that, that, that's also one of the dumbest things ever. John literally said before Keanu came on the show and he was, uh, John likes to argue with people when they're not there. That's his favorite thing to do. That's his only thing. Is, he can't go toe to toe with anybody because no. he's a kindergartner, right? No, he, he, wants to, he wants to yell at his computer screen. Yes. Which I'm sure happens even when the computer's not broadcasting the internet. But <laughs> yeah. so he's he's yelling at his computer screen about how he's fucked hotter girls than you. As if yeah. you're going to be like, no, damn it. Come on. Oh, stupid, stupid, stupid. <laughs> and he's like, I fucked centerfolds. I'm like, John, I'm 31. What's a centerfold? <laughs> get out. Go home, old man. Oh, you are home. You're going to have to get that and turn it off because it's going to drive me nuts. I can hear it. You're, hey, yeah, just grab it. The other thing I wanted to point out was. Well, Gino's being distracting. I can't believe it. What are yeah. the he's chances? He's got the phone going. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to point out was, yeah, everything. Fucking, she said about like when people are like, "Oh, John's flirting with Keanu," blah blah blah, and I'm like, "It, it, it no one cares." They're like, you gotta, right. do. and then John's like, "I'm not flirting," and then the second John goes from you know being returning, you know, being sweet with him, and she goes, well, "He's like a kindergartner." I wasn't flirting with you, but now I'm pissed because I thought I was flirting. That's exactly yeah. why he got mad yeah. because suddenly he's like, "She's not, she she's not turned on by me." No, mm. Jesus oh, Christ! When he was watching the video of. <laughs> You and your mom and Missy B all talk about what a pathetic loser he is. Those are my <laughs> those are my words, not yours. He was so upset because that's the most humiliating thing for him when attractive girls think he's a loser. Yeah. And so he immediately has to go into how you're not attractive because that's gonna fix everything in his how life. How my mother's an old battle axe. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Battle axe. That was the best. But I loved when he was trying to explain how Missy B isn't hot. Everyone's right. just like, wait, what just happened? I, you're going to change the laws of perception now? What, what are you talking Who's about? Who's this dog? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. Fucking idiots. No, he's sitting and then he said, y then three girls are beaten up on me? It was a very light beating, for yes. Christ's sake. And also, it's on the internet. I'm not a real housewife of YouTube like you, John, okay? Listen, it was very... It, it's, it was very lighthearted. We were all just laughing. It was for a matter of two minutes. He now he's just angrily jerking off to all three of us. <laughs> right. Of yeah, I don't no Missy B's gonna get out of the action of his fantasy. <laughs> yeah, oh right. God, when he was explaining exactly how, uh, his fantasy. Anyway, let me um just promote real quick. Tomorrow I'm recording WATP episode five hundred. Very exciting stuff. And I'm happy to tell you, Missy B's coming on the show.
Whee. She hasn't watched John react to this yet, so she yeah. wants to do that on WATP tomorrow. Yes! Okay, so great. That's, that's going to be awesome. I can't wait to show her what uh, John Jersey was saying. Last week. Yes, that's why it all started, right? Yeah, yeah. that's true. I'm so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Zach Hoffman says, Gino and Keanu, happy you two are here, was wondering if you knew that there is pre-K. Not only kindergarten. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> LOL, by the way, you have a pretty good skull. By the way, <laughs> I should thank John because I was saying this yesterday. It's like, it's like I've been known to have a beverage or two, Carl. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and like, why does John always have to say, I fuck a lot of hot women. I'm not drunk right now. Why do you think you have to say those two things? He fucks centerfolds. <laughs> what they are, I don't know. He's but... a matinee idol. <laughs> but Gino, it all comes back to his childish behavior. John's really never gotten out of, I wanted to say high school, but maybe middle school. Because the things he brags about, like how long he talks on the phone with Kate Meany. Yeah. Could you imagine telling another grown adult that you had a phone conversation for hours with a cute girl? <laughs> what? <laughs> this gets back to what Blind Mike just said. How you do, and I'm sure you get understand. Like John is one of those people that he's never he's never looked at himself and and taken you know taken accountability for who he is. He's one of those people that makes. Would you look at yourself in the mirror if you were John? <sighs> It's hard enough right now for me, but he's one of those guys that that it's like I like Sal and Richard, but they're all the same. They to talk to them, they make it sound like Howard Stern back when he was amazing was like sitting there calling them up on the phone, like, "Look, I host the show, but I don't know how to do it. I need a I need a radio genius genius like you." And then I I was talking to John once, and I'm literally saying, "You got I'm a celebrity. You got the Tonight Show because the story's like I got it because I'm a uh, because I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here." I'm like. How were you a celebrity, you fucking idiot? You pre k <laughs> he's right, you pre-K mental idiot because of Stern. Yes. Yeah, and also all of his friendships that he formed when he was on the Stern show, and Howard called him out on this. He would have these people buy him Yankees tickets and get him uh -huh. deals on stocks and all these different things. And it was all just people who called into the Stern show to talk to Howard Stern. Right. And then all of a sudden John's friends with them. <laughs> it's just like, oh, what well, how does that happen? <laughs> That's how John values friendship is like he kept saying with Keanu, he's like, after I was so kind to you, he kept using that phrase. I was so yeah. kind to you. And he mixes I was up kind to him as well. I sure, mean, but he mixes up a lot of other people would be. <laughs> he mixes up kind and polite. Like, I'm sure he was nice enough to you, but he was he kind. Did he give you the, the shirt off his back? Like, did he do anything to help you in your life at all? He wasn't kind to you. He was just like kind of polite I guess. he was lovely it was lovely that he came out to that show <laughs> and and of course i'm gonna laugh when he stands up in the middle of it because he's a big celebrity and he even said i gotta oh, hold on keanu look at this there to see i got a heart on keanu. hold on how <laughs> could you tell <laughs> how could you tell he was standing up did he get like on the chair or something <laughs> he had a footstool with what? him no um he... in john's defense you know what it is he's not good at being a friend he doesn't know how to be a friend. Like I, we were, we weren't as nice as we could have been to him. Like I, I called him out when he said shit about our friends, but it's like, look, I, I don't care that you don't, we're trying to be nice. And he just, he can't handle it. That was my only problem with him is that I don't, I'm not going to inherit your grudges. I love Anthony and Missy, obviously. You can sit here and say all that shit to me about them, but then you turn around and I say one little thing about you being a kindergartner to my friend, Missy. And now it's just World War Three, you mental midget. Yeah, well, that's the other thing. Stop. John has this weird mentality. And again, it goes back to being a child. Right. He has this mentality where he thinks that Missy only talks shit about John to please her boyfriend. Or, you know, Gino has to say this because he works for Anthony and Anthony doesn't like me. I can't, I don't know any adult who the way they feel about someone is based on someone else's opinion of them. Right. That's, <laughs> so what, stupid. that's what middle schoolers do. That's right. what you do when you're in kindergarten. I, that's not how I operate. I also don't like that guy. Can we be friends? Yes. Yeah. I liked John in Atlantic City. He couldn't have been nicer, I honestly. And he, is, he, he just wants to drink and have a fun time. I was going to say, he couldn't have been drunker. Yeah. In yeah. City. <laughs> nicer, drunker. I, I coordinate the two. But together. you know, I've been known to have a beverage or two. I didn't. I found him charming and lovely when we were there. All right. So I have been nice to him. And yes, he's been nothing but nice to me. Yes. Thank you, John, for coming on my show. Wonderful. <laughs> I thank you so much for gracing me with your presence. <laughs> and then, and then the jerking map. off to me after. <laughs> Wonderful. Forgive me. I'm, I just saw a thing pop up the latest super chat. And I know 
but he just he did the Simpsons line. Look, Lisa, you can see the exact moment where you broke his heart. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I saw that in uh, Dabblers Anonymous when they were showing the video of you saying you talked to like a kindergartner and him going, oh, kindergartner. It's like you slowed down. You can see Martin. <laughs> I thought we had something, you bitch. Because this is worse than I thought. <laughs> uh, you know, I got to ask you guys real quick while I have you here, and then we'll get back on track. Yes. I promise. <laughs> so we're talking about uh, Kate Meany and having long phone conversations. Now, you two are both best friends with Chad Zumach uh, since you did that comedy show with him. Of course. Oh, yeah. Um, what is up with Chad Zumach's relationship with Kate Meany and these long phone conversations they have? Oh, Any insight into that? I, well, I don't know. I don't talk to Kate. And I, I was talking to Florentine the other day because he came on my show to talk about that horse shit. And we laughed because we've known Chad forever. And he said the same thing. He's not like, that I, horse shit, the Seattle thing. The Seattle horse right, shit. Yeah. Yes, thank yeah. you for clarifying that. But it, he said it about Chad. It's like, Chad, like we've known him before all this shit. And he would hang out at clubs and you'd drink with him. And he was just a fucking dumb idiot like all of us. But he's not qualified to be in the dabble verse. And he he just, he's like, you, you saw all the lying about Kumya. He changes lies and he doesn't realize what you're saying actually makes you a piece of shit. Right. But you think it's not a piece of shit when you say it on a YouTube thing, you know? And that's what he, thank you for getting to the center of the corn maze. I do talk too much, but that's him with Kate Meany. He's like, let me just say I talked to her for hours, which any straight man or me would go, that's gay. That's gay. He's like this is great dabbles. This is great whatever. Yeah, six hours on the on the phone with Kate Meaty was his big brag. But you're right, he's always lying, and John's turning into that now too. See how I segued that back into the John discussion because I'm a pro, Gino. You, know, you see that? And let everyone get their bearings. And you know. I've noticed that John has turned into Chad Zubak, where everything is a lie, and I get bored with that. I don't want to watch a show where someone's just feeding me bullshit the entire time. Because what's Honesty the point? Honesty is the that? best policy. Yeah. Hey, are Chad's lies wildly entertaining? Maybe. Sometimes, sometimes. Sometimes, yes. The whole oil well, can once. thing. <laughs> well, I, I, can, I can think of one example of when it was interesting. <laughs> and we called about it. That was fun for a week or two, but that was about it. Oh, and then when he tries to tell the truth, like Kate was looking for blow uh, when they were hanging out, which I know I know that for a fact, right? Sure. Then, then she's going to lie and say, Chad, no, mm -mm, that didn't happen. So now it's like, he's finally telling the truth. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, well, let yeah. him tell the truth. Yeah. Stan <laughs> Stancil confirmed it. That's why uh, I believe oh, that yeah. to be true for sure. But it's crazy to me because you look at the people who, and I'll, I'll use the word grew up with, that's probably not the case, maybe for Mike and Keanu, but you look at the people that we grew up listening to, uh, like Howard Stern, like Opie and Anthony, you know, Jim Norton, Anthony Cumia, we loved them because they were so honest about their lives and it was so real and it might've been embarrassing at times and not painting them in the best light, but you latched onto that. And then you get guys like Stuttering John who brags about shit he has never done and lies about what he's accomplished in life over and over again. It's like, no one can relate to this, John. This is Which not is why endearing. I say he was trying to impress me, right? Yes. I don't mean like I'm so hot and wonderful and, you know, successful that stuttering John was trying to impress me. I mean, it's the way that he speaks with me. Like, well, I went to the NYU and, and I'm like, that's wonderful, little boy. That's great. <laughs> What's Ever heard of the pro football arm wrestling championships? <laughs> <laughs> What's more embarrassing, saying you went to NYU or, or that you have a graduate student from a graduate degree from Cleveland State? Like, <laughs> I'll say it again. I graduated from the University of Delaware and I don't like to say it because I don't want to upset that school. I don't want to embarrass that place. <laughs> they actually have a cease and desist on you bringing that up, Shut I believe. Up. John put out a tweet today. Maybe it was yesterday, but I, I saw it on. I, I'm blocked by John, so I have to see his tweets secondhand when they are posted somewhere. I probably it, am too now. I didn't it check. It says, uh, Keanu Thompson does her best to use words that she thinks sound smart to overcompensate for a complete I lack mean. of intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> the woman, and by the way, I, I, I believe he posted this on National Woman's Day. I'm, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> he says, the woman obviously lacks a college education much like the most of the devil verse and has to resort to being naked on an only fans account. And then he, he tags <laughs> Kate media on that tweet for some reason. Yes. Well, we all know how intelligent she is as well. My gosh. And uh, well, that's hilarious. I probably am blocked. I did not see that, but yes, congratulations, John. You're right. This, I, I this intelligent, 
<laughs> this intelligent man, John Melendez, I heard him say something about him when him and Keanu were briefly going back and forth. Keanu said something like, you're the prom king of the Dabbleverse. And John yeah. goes, it's the Duke of the Dabbleverse. At least get my title right. Well, because I, when he first came on my show, I said, look, it's the prom king of the Dabbleverse. He loved it. I'm sure yeah. he was erect. Okay. But then he goes, yeah. he was like, she keeps calling me the prom king of the Dabbleverse. It's the Duke. Get it right. Uh, I'm like, okay, well. But that's the problem when you live in this, you know, I'll say it pre-K level. Shout out to whoever pointed that there is a, there is a trap door beneath the cellar floor. When you live like that, like you, like all you do is like, well, just be nice to me. But when you're just being honest, you know, it's like, it's like, then I'm going to say nice things. But when I shit on you, maybe you take that. You know what I mean? Like yeah. some guy in the chat just said, I chat, I yap more than six barbers. Fucking hysterical. That's comedy gold, people. But it's real. And his with point it, with the OnlyFans thing, he loved it before. He's very progressive. I right. think it's a compliment to jerk off to somebody. I'm like, listen, that's perfectly fine, John. As long as you don't jerk off on me right. in public, <laughs> yes. I'm perfectly fine. He was so progressive and such a, you know, um, uh, an ally to females. Now he's a complete misogynist emailing my betrothed and being that she sells a body online fuck off I suck my dick how about that i should have wrote back i'll handle it john that's what i should have done <laughs> yeah. i'm so stupid but in that one in that one interaction with the chat gino just had he showed more self-awareness than john ever has where it's again amazing you're in radio for years podcasting comedy whatever he has no ounce of ball but where if anyone says anything like keanu said we're like ah, i treat him like a kindergartner he can't for a second take that in stride and be like yeah i can be a little immature at times it never yes. crosses his mind it, no I my... think i've been shit on for years by the likes of kevin brennan uh, and 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 the like i have taken everything in stride I, I i am the best sport all any other chick may have gotten like a little offended that uh that he's like well i jerked off to her we were in cowgirl position and i'm imagining i don't <laughs> care it's just silly to me i'll be right back he calls me on the phone. he calls <laughs> take me on your the time phone. <laughs> won't take long at all <laughs> he calls me on the phone says i think i offended your mother and just tell her next time I'll jerk off to her too. Which was right. nice. And I thought that's <laughs> that is sweet. Delightful. Very <laughs> hilarious. Other women might think that's a scumbag thing to say, but you I might. took it in stride, didn't I, Johnny Boy? And well, by the way, speaking of self awareness, I'll do the shameless plug now. If you watch in hot water, Carl will tell you 90% of it is me talking like a lunatic and Garrett and Steve shitting on me to bring me back to reality. Yeah. And I love that. Oh, you know, I would. They, I would love to see the day when someone says something to you that you actually get pissed about. I mean, yeah. it'll, it'll never happen, but it'd be amazing if there's like this one thing that we don't know about and you're just like, what motherfucker? But, and that's, and, and I'll make it a broader scale. Like you watch these people with politics going on, these actors acting all intelligent, like, and they know nothing. And I've always said this and I won't bring up the C word, you know, or, but I said, I'm not Christmas. 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 Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, all these motherfuckers. And I, that's so good. But I always say it, I'm like, I'm not telling you what I think because I'm a genius. I'm saying I'm stupid and this is common sense to me. Not well, like Steve Martin's like, if you don't understand what's going on, shut up and put a real arrow through your head. So um, I, I want to point out that John would, if he was watching this right now, <clears throat> he is, he would be, <laughs> he would be offended by the fact that we're saying he doesn't take ball busting in stride. And he always thinks that he's, he has a good sense of humor about himself. And I'll give you an example just recently. He goes, uh, you know, you guys shouldn't have taken my photo when I was out for my uh, hike. But uh, these photoshops that people are making are great. And then he shows an example of one that he thinks is really funny. And it's him walking with the other Beatles on Abbey Road. He's like, see, I can, I can take some ball busting. It's like they just photoshopped you in the Beatles on their best album. Yeah, but they're calling me Pete Best. I like the gay ball busting. <laughs> Fucking idiot. Bards and noobs. I got to get caught up on Super Chats real quick. Gino. It's hard to do five bucks. John thinks he's the sacred cow who can never be talked badly about by anyone will never cease to amaze me. Yeah. John does have this weird thing where he's just like, there's two things in John's world. He doesn't understand. Um, repeatedly. I, I caught myself there. I'm like the only two things. What do you mean? <laughs> he thinks that his credits mean that he is talented and good at what he does and that no one can goof on him for mm. being that. And I forgot the other thing. 
<laughs> RP two bucks says, "Who's this pale face olive oil?" That's Gino Biscotti. Thank you. I, I but I do think I lost. He's him. olive Thank oil. You. Yeah. <laughs> RP five bucks says. She beds down broken jaw Gino, and we're supposed to take her seriously. Unfunny olive oil, Gino, how's your jaw coward? Oh, oh my God. Oh, I, my God. It pretty feels- good. Better than ever. By the way, uh, if you go look at the video, you didn't knock me down, Pat, but you did punch yourself all the way down to Tennessee. By the way, Pat's a great stand-up. Go see him at Hackamania. I've said this constantly. Yeah, he great did the, the- uh- By the way, now I am going to talk, because you said the C word. We had, and Keanu will back me up, we had we love- some- porn star on in hot water uh two weeks ago that literally basically if you saw it i think she answered a craigslist ad in florida to get raped by a black man but that's not important right now and we showed her this keyword joke and this woman who was probably on pills said so catholics don't believe in christmas and i said wait a minute we will after her and then i said that would actually make sense because if you're in a fucking place where a woman's like there's a lot of catholics here say the c word that would make sense that's right. how bad that fucking joke is. It doesn't. The, the joke doesn't make any sense. I'll give you that. But also, I want to point out, Pat Dixon is a very good stand-up. He came to the roast of Carl and Vinny here in Rochester, and he did a yeah. set. And uh, he's a very funny guy, and we'll be at Hackamania, hackamania.com for tickets. He does a joke, and I say Halfway it all the time. Halfway sold out. He does I a heard. joke. It's still one of my favorites where he goes, if it weren't for, if it weren't for porn, I wouldn't know how to spell amateur. Yes. And then, and then while people are laughing, he's like, and let me tell you, I like amateur, I like fat chicks, really fat, like 140 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then about two seconds later, women start to get it and they get mad. And you're like, that is the best fucking joke. That's he hilarious. Great on stage. That's good. Never deny that. MK basic five bucks says, did SJ call Ian his highness? I actually didn't watch the interview. Cause I, I, I find John talking to someone seriously boring. I don't think he did because they came up in the chat and I don't think John got the reference. Okay. Uh, Short Friday's two bucks. Does Blind Mike watch Jerry after dark? Uh, From time to time when he's uh, breaking Caitlin Clark's record or something like that. Yeah, sure. I like Jerry. Bob doing a COVID test. Two bucks says is Keanu Gino's daughter. Yes. Yes. She has enough of my DNA in her to be. Whoa. (laughs) That was untoward. That wasn't bad, actually. (laughs) Short Friday, two bucks says, why is Blind Mike skipping my super chats? Dude, Blind Mike's the worst with super chats. I pointed this out many times. Terribly lazy. with. He's blind. (laughs) Thank you, Gina. You're welcome. (laughs) Hey, Flight Changer, a.k.a. LB at five bucks says, more Blind Mike breaking down the Army Major Ojeda on his show. Friggin' funny. I think you'll get that Sunday at 10 a.m. So there you stay go. Tuned. No one covers uh, Richard Ojeda better than uh, Mike and Craig on the Blind Mike Project. <laughs> Quite a feather in my cap. I mean, no one else is doing it. But no one <laughs> yeah. does it better. <laughs> Uncle Jack, five bucks, says, hey, Carl, where's Grant? Tell him I said hi. Grant is probably at work right now. He's a very, well, he might be home, but he's a very hardworking man. We don't live together. We haven't lived together since we lived with my parents. Uh, Mason of Portland, a.k.a. Portland Shane Gillis, two bucks. Send Slapjaw the link, Carl. He has a lot to say. Slapjaw. Who's Slapjaw? Pat Dixon, I assume. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Oh, why would you call him Slapjaw? Because he slapped my jaw? I don't know. I don't know, Mason. (laughs) I'll send whoever the link. Let me know who I'm sending the link to. We'll get it figured out. By the way, my buddy... uh, um, who was it on MLC yesterday? Liam McNini uh, made his debut on uh, MLC. I was very happy for him to get on there. I've known him since we did fucking quit bragging, you know, like bars in Brooklyn, like 15 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And I, wow. I, I learned a lot about him that he was suicidal at the age of 10 and got on SSRIs. And that's why he gained a bunch of weight. And I got to say that when you're on a ball busting show like MLC, you bring that up, it really slows things to a halt. So good job, Liam. That was <laughs> impressive. People are like, hey, look at how fat this guy is. Yeah, I know. I tried to kill myself when I was 10. All right. Well, anyway, you're funny, though. I mean, you got that going for you. <laughs> uh, Brian Cottrell, two bucks, says, Gino, weren't you there at that famous a a episode? I guess they mean the one where uh, we uh, fucking confronted John. I was. I was in the audience. Because John was mad at me because I used to always say when from the uh, we did an Artie Lang episode. And whenever he said I was on The Tonight Show, I'm like, you were on The Tonight Show? And it drove him nuts. He kept saying, yeah. And he's like, what were you on? I'm like, nothing. But you were on The Tonight Show? It would drive him nuts. Uh, that's hilarious. 
Red with 10 bucks coming in, 473, says Kate Meany is John's next guest so he can cry on her shoulder. He's also going to go back to KB because now he hates Gino again. He's so predictable, it's getting boring. That sounds like a rip roaring good time. <laughs> John does have some type of love towards Kevin Brennan that I cannot process. I he even do. It, for the, all the pain and strife he's put me through, I, I I can't say that he doesn't make me laugh. I can't say it. He does. He but does. Uh, yeah, it must be rough being uh, the older bro brother of Neil Brennan. It just must suck. So it is. It is weird with John though, because he keeps going. He keep, he will like viscerally talk about how much he hates Kevin and how he's done with him, and that's it. He's had enough, and then he always ends up going back. I don't know what the benefit. Is. I don't know what's different about Kevin than anyone else to John. Kevin pays him. Oh, but, wait, but not enough. <laughs> there you go. Oh, no. yeah. He owes me 50 bucks. <laughs> Melissa Young gifted one. Who are these podcast memberships? Thank you very much for gifting a membership, Melissa. I appreciate it. DJQ coming in with $100. And yes, for that, you are going to get a. Yay, super chats. <laughs> DJQ, 100 bucks says, thank you, Keanu, for telling the truth about the piece of shit known as Centering John. He's trash, and the more people that point it out, the sooner he's humbled. Keep up the great work. Love you guys. F-S-J. Wow. He doesn't know the word humble. <laughs> no, that's true. We'll keep trying. <laughs> I think that's one of the things that's so shocking to everyone, because the Dabbleverse is continuing to grow. More and more people are coming into Dabbleverse Anonymous, watching these shows, observing John. And I think what people, <laughs> when they first come into this, they go, why is John still around? There's right. no winning this. This is just going to keep getting worse and worse and worse. And it's that's what's fascinating wreck. about him. It's a train wreck. It's you can't stop watching. It's it's it, that's why he's like all these shows are about me. Well, they're not about you because you're an intelligent handsome gentleman. <laughs> they're about you because you're ridiculous and they're the laughing train. at you. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Keanu, I had this thought today because I was watching John and he's talking about like uh, I must be George Clooney. I get so much attention over here. No, John, you're being bullied in school by everyone. You're the school nerd that everyone picks on. No one who's getting their wedgies and swirlies every day goes, I must be the most popular kid in school. Everyone knows my name. Yes, I can't think of one show that does this to George Clooney. Right. <laughs> no. Right. Do you think George Clooney's cool. Maybe he, confused, yes. maybe he confused George Clooney with Jerry Cooney yes. because he's getting beat to shit. George Clooney is an intelligent human being who does not want to be in the spotlight. Do you see him with the paparazzi or live streaming? No, he's working He's working on great movies. He's not sitting in his mother's house on Epstein Island, falling down drunk. Right. Whoa. Well, he might be in his mother's <laughs> house falling down drunk. I don't know about that. Maybe. The amazing thing is, though, he said he said this with Keanu. He says it with every enemy that he makes is another de good deed goes on. No yeah, good no deed goes deed. unpunished. Yeah. And then uh, he he says like another one of these people that just turns on you for no reason. I didn't yeah. turn on him. I made an oh, of course description <laughs> of him. That's the and, and I don't think anybody would disagree with me there. Also, yes, thank you for coming on my show. W would you want me to? And, isn't he like, if you apologize, then we're good. I went on and apologized yep. and he got even angrier. <laughs> That's a great point. That's a really good point. And uh, okay. So I, I wanted to save some of this talk, but we'll get into it because, you know, Patrick Melton was talking about his kids on his show for all this time. And then John's whole thing was apologize to me and then we're good. Mm -hmm. But you go on to apologize and immediately you're like, I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. I, I apologize for that. It wasn't like a fake apology. And he wouldn't accept it. But no. what happened was, John's so bad at scrubbing. I'm going to play this on WATP tomorrow. We don't do clips on this roundtable discussion show. But John's so bad at scrubbing on YouTube that he kept playing the same clip over and over and over again. <laughs> so he's like, you were trashing me for 20 minutes. Like, John, it was a... a 90 second discussion that it you kept really scrubbing was. back to over and over and over again. I said, I'm good at quelling douchebaggery. Yeah. And it's like talking to a kindergartner. That yes. was it. He was emailed it. him and said, She called me a scumbag twice. <laughs> yeah. He, he, back, I'll straighten her out, John. I said, I don't think. <laughs> good man. I said, I, I said, it wouldn't be wrong if I had, but I don't think I use that word. You do, John. You use it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but am I am I just inserting this? I thought you said like I I'm good at quelling douchebaggery, and then something like I do it with Gino, like you said it about Gino or something right. like that. Yes, exactly. Where John can't see that it's all ball busting. 
it's just ball busting. I say like I I, I just and then on my stream I was like like my douchebag or scumbag my betrothed. my scumbag betrothed. Yes, scumbag like I'm betrothed. I'm trying to make it lighthearted. He he knows that it's like he knows if he kept me on that show longer, there's no possibility that I, I don't come out like in the right. So then he just goes, okay. Oh, uh, yeah. you know what? I'm an idiot. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Because he needs an enemy. And so if he gets all riled up and you're like, listen, I'm sorry. I didn't mean anything by it. We we're just like some white ball busting, but I thought we were friends. And then right. it's just like, well, that doesn't work for my narrative. You're off. You're yeah, blocked. you have to go because this is the real housewives of YouTube and I need an enemy. <laughs> because, and this was another point that I wanted to bring up today. We'll, we'll circle back around to, to yeah. this because I think it's very interesting. And I'm glad you're on the show today, Keanu. But mm -hmm. Shuli tried to put out a truce. And Shuli said to John, Look, we have this photo of you substitute teaching. You deny that you're a substitute teacher, but you are. And so why don't we do this thing where we stop talking about families? Let's not, let's, we won't talk about your family. You don't talk about our family and we'll just squash all of that. And John, when brought, you know, Vince, the lawyer brought this to him and said, this is what he wants to do. John <laughs> refused to do that. And it's because, and this came out from Patrick Melton in AC, John wants all of us trashing his kids because that's what get, gets eyeballs on John's show. Right. He would rather get super chats insulting him than actually not have people talk about his kids and, and beat up on his whatever, his, whatever he perceives this as people beating up on his family, which is not actually happening, but that's what he likes to say is happening. Right. He has no other defense system. What's he going to say? Oh, everyone's calling me a fat, stupid drunk. <laughs> 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 They're so off base. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. Very good point. He's the only guy that, like, ever once a show, you see him now. He's like, I'm not drunk. This is my first skull. It's like, why are you telling us how much you've drank? Just drink and enjoy it. Right. Yeah. Or don't, whichever. <laughs> but the, John's big excuse for why he won't stop talking about uh, Shuli's dead mom or Shuli's wife or my wife or, you know, all these different people that he calls out. His big excuse is, and again, remember, we said we have to talk to him like he's a kindergartner. His excuse is they started it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not making that up. I'm not putting words in his mouth. He literally says, no way. They started it. And they drew you know, first blood. When yeah. you bring that up, I did hear him because I don't watch him often. Um, but I did hear him mention. So I was talking to my kids about this and they say, you know what, dad? They're just trolling. Don't worry about it or whatever. Yeah. They're either they either did say that they're probably just like, dad, you're an embarrassment. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> we don't care what they say about us. Or he's just saying that so good talk about him more so I can have some more enemies. I right. mean, and more super chats. I don't know. Mm. Keanu, you're not as deep into the devil verse as some of us. So I about um, <laughs> about five months ago, John got a strike on his channel or something. He was suspended for a week. He couldn't podcast for a week on YouTube. And before that, right before that strike happened and he knew that he was going to be off, he said, you know what? I think I'm going to stop podcasting. My youngest son told me to stop doing it. All it does is bring me aggravation and it's not good for me. So I'm going to listen to my son and I'm going to quit. And then he's gone. I for watched a week. you guys talk about this on this. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So okay. then he's gone for a week and then he comes back and he's back to everything that he was doing. It's like, John, if this conversation with your son actually happened, you're the worst father ever. Your son's <laughs> asking you not to do this, actively telling you, please stop doing this, dad. And you're like, yeah, but hold on a second, because I think Leo Gunn's going to give me 10 bucks tonight. So. Yes, Brock, <laughs> Brock Lee's my best friend. What happened <laughs> Leo Gunn? I did a show like a year ago. Leo Gunn was there. We're hanging out. Now it's just, I don't know what, and he has money now. He's a, I don't know what he is, but he's found his stride in the dabble verse. <laughs> and circling back to that, you were talking about like, like the devil versus like comedy, well, the opposite, but comedy, I've always said it chooses you. And like you, you say one thing, do one thing, you're in it. Like I never thought I was in it. I'm like, I'm in it. Like I reached out to Andrew uh, Alex Stein one time, like, hey, can you do this? Uh, I'm filling in for Anthony. You want to Skype in? He's like, I'm trying to stay away from the dabble verse. And I'm like, ooh, that hurts. He said, taking a break. <laughs> yeah, taking a break from the dabble verse. I'm like, ouch. But like Keanu yesterday, she's like, I'm not even a part of him. Like, you are now, Keanu. 
You're in the Dabbleverse. Uh, Welcome aboard. What an honor. Yeah, well, <laughs> didn't choose it. Maybe, maybe you could be like Kate Meany and quit the Dabbleverse. No, <laughs> oh, oh, this Dabbleverse. Oh, my God. My I tried it once. It doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Mike, Mike tried to publicly say he's all done talking about Senator John, and three weeks later, he's like, all right, well, this is a crazy week. I have to talk about what John's up to. <laughs> well, can I make a point to your point, Carl, when yes. he was uh, talking to his kid? You said if it if that conversation really happened, he's the worst dad ever. Yes. I would I would add to that if that conversation didn't happen, he's <laughs> even crazier yes. because he's saying I, intellectually, without my kid knowing this, I know it's bad for my children. Wow! But to gain sympathy, I'm going to make up a lie to use them <laughs> to make all of you look bad. Right. That's you're right. That's worse. <laughs> it's way worse. It's worse. <laughs> wow. Oh shit. Yeah. That's the thing about John's lies is that he doesn't come out looking good either way. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Uh, Bob doing a COVID test. Keanu and no, Kate and Keanu are built like twelve year olds. Yeah. What does that yeah. say about Gina? Yes. Don't jinx it, Bob. I know. If I were built, don't jinx it. If I were built like a kindergartner, maybe uh, you know John would have a chance. There you, you go. Know, so. Mark Bison, five bucks, says, at the end of this chain of wacky lawsuits, John will brilliantly sue himself and win, then die in a debtor's prison when he can't pay up. Solemn skull. <laughs> Jeff Spangler, two bucks, says, yep, sounds like they turned on me. <laughs> sure does. Dang Lizard, five euros, says, my favorite thing was SJ losing his mind over Keanu, basically confirming everything any person of normal intelligence has already seen in the stream. Yeah. I know this is this is the thing. John hates reality. When reality hits him, he has a really hard time dealing with it. No, he can't. Mm -mm. Uh, Bully coming in with two bucks says, "I heard Carl is saying VTL has a spectrum disorder." Yeah, you've been hearing that a lot. Thomas James at two bucks says, "Keanu, does your mom have an OnlyFans?" Not as of yet. Ooh. You're talking. You're trying to talk her into it. No, I'm teaser. not trying to talk her into That's it. A teaser, baby. <laughs> Chuck Khan coming in with five bucks and. Uh, he or she says, John insulted Keanu in the only way he knows will kill her. He has withdrawn his desire to fuck her. Stand strong, Keanu. Uh, You'll be fuckable I, again. I, what, what am I going to do? I miss you, <laughs> son of God. I miss you so much. No, Come didn't you hear his, uh, his cute little statement last night? He goes, no, no, no. We're going to have makeup sex tonight. <laughs> That's oh, right. <laughs> he did not say that. I swear to God. Yeah. Yeah. He's insane. Uh, you know, he's probably in his fantasy because he explained the entire act that he had with you. In his fantasy, he probably is like, making up with you first, and you're going to him and go, John, I'm so sorry. You know, Missy B made me say that. I'm trying to impress my friend. I did this because of Anthony and Gino. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. it's all right. I'll let you suck my balls. That's fine. <laughs> Just keep your motor out of the room. How about that? That's TC fine. Five Bucks says, I don't know, Gino. What's with the Brett Michaels headband? Just curious. Uh, it goes back to COVID, buddy, back when I was right about everything and you couldn't get a haircut and I was wearing a gator. I have a Bill's gator. I should have worn it. And one time I pulled it up on my head. And since I'm a guinea, I grew my hair afros, but I like the look. And then people started sending them to me. And right now I have a cat a scratch on my head. So I have to wear it so people don't look at me like I'm insane. It hey, also makes the, uh, the Gino impression by Rocco more uh, legit, too. <laughs> It is. It a better, I'll say it again. When Keanu showed me that when we were driving back from AC, I'm he like, is that that's, me? He said, that's, that's me. me. I literally pulled over. I'm like, is that, that's not me? It was 20 minutes. I'm like, it's Am I not here right now? Or funnier me. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. Don Five Bucks says, you could pinpoint the exact moment John's heart was broken. That's yes, the one that's, I laughed at. That's I, what you were talking about before. Look, Lisa, you can see right, <laughs> nothing gets chocolate out. See, that's such a good episode. Oh, in the, the dabblers and honest, where somebody pointed that out. Um, somebody wrote, he cuckoo cores you. <laughs> 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 Silence do good five bucks says John can't comprehend why people would be nice to would comment on how terrible and gross he is. White people he was okay. John can't comprehend why people he was nice to would comment on how terrible and gross he is. John, maybe try not saying and doing dumb gross things. This is another thing that John he'll never understand. And this was the point that I was trying to make earlier and I forgot. But John thinks that. No one is allowed to judge him based on everything he puts out into the universe. If he's right. nice to you, then that means you cannot make fun of him. 
Right. If he says a nice thing about you, you can't possibly go on your show and just be like, I don't know, I watched John's show and it's not great. He's not very good at broadcasting. He doesn't really have any preparation. It just right. seems like it's all over the place. All I did was say your show was great. How could you yeah. say this? After everything I've done for you. Yeah. It's not necessarily, in my mind, I don't care and I find it funny. It's not necessarily nice to say, Keanu in those leather pants. Ugh. I jerked off to her. <laughs> it, that's not particularly <laughs> nice. It's more just crass <laughs> than right. nice. But I, I suppose I take it as a compliment. If I were a different person, I might be creeped out by that. You were so it, nice to me, John. My God, I just, I really fucked up. It's also <laughs> interesting that like super liberal John went right to, when he turned on Keanu, went right to, you're a fucking whore that makes yeah. money selling your body. Yeah, it's like, oh, that's exactly. a pretty woke stance, John. <laughs> Yes, exactly, woke John. I thought we were celebrating OnlyFans and celebrating letting your freak flag fly and all of that stuff. No, you're a misogynist and you emailed my betrothed instead of me. Fuck you. Well, hold on a second. Let me stick up for stuttering John because this is a, a roundtable discussion. John has recently introduced a new concept that he's playing a character known as Stuttering John uh, yes. who is not John Melendez. John Melendez is a school teacher. Oh, but okay. stuttering John, watch out for that guy. He's a real character. Oh, yeah. And it's funny because Vinny Paulino was over at my house today. And we were talking about this very point. And Vinny blames Anthony for even planting this seed. Because Anthony once said, if John is playing a character, it's the greatest character anyone's <laughs> ever come up with. Yeah, and I think John heard that and just went, yeah, this is a character that I my do. My personality it is a character. <laughs> is it possible DeVito's doing the same thing? There's Ray DeVito who's killing women along I-80. And there's Ray DeVito who literally fucking had 600 viewers. I'll admit, I was one of them screaming at that awful fucking roast. He's a genius idiot. Yeah. Yeah, he might, he might be. By the way, he'll also be at Hackamania.com, May 31st or June 2nd wow. in Las Vegas. But... More importantly, guys, we're going to be in Largo, Florida, March 22nd. That's coming up just a couple of weeks now. We'll be down in Largo, Florida, WATPLive.com is where you can get tickets to come see the show. The guys from Revenge of the Sis will be there. Do you know those guys, Gino? I do indeed. Yeah, so That's they're Marsh great. And, uh, whatchamacallit, right? Mersh and Royce. Yeah, they're great. Mm -hmm. They'll be there. Uh, we're also going to have Tukey's going to be there and Cardiff and Dr. Steve and the whole cast of characters. Give Dr. Steve a smooch for me. We've had some COVID discussions. Oh, I bet. Oh, I bet yeah. I was on Weird Medicine. Uh, I got to go I on there on during the too. pandemic. I didn't realize he was such a shill for the lies. Anyway, go on. <laughs> I'm vaccinated. He Is literally... that Weird Medicine? No. I, ca no I called him out. if you're vaccinated or not. No one can. I don't care. Oh, I'm sorry. I even said it. Oh, God. Yes. <laughs> hey, Casper says, hey, Carl Butters hamburger. Ah, <laughs> uh, hamburgers. Uh, this is something I cannot pronounce, but it's 10 euros and it says, Skull. 10 euro skull. Go! I'll, I'll say Fiener. Is that close enough, do you think? <laughs> sure. Yeah. John has bad credit with two bucks. Says John values friendship based on what you can give him. Yes, that is 100% the case. John only takes from people, and you can see how many friends he goes through. That's not true. I'm still friends with Hitman Dan. It doesn't matter that you have a friend from middle school that you still talk to twice uh. a year, John. I disagree. I heard the list of things he did for Mike Machete, and it seems like that was all above board. Oh, there was oh no my lord. That was Holy bad. shit, you just reminded me, and this is something I'm going to play for Missy tomorrow on WATP. John got lost on who he was upset with. He's playing the clips of Missy B and Keanu goofing on him, and he goes off on a rant about Mike Machete in the middle of it. You're like, what the fuck is going on right now, John? This is not who you're mad at right now. You Special head. Special head. Well, maybe he's mad at John, excuse me, at Mike, because Mike's been on fucking uh, Brennan a lot lately. That's why. That is why, yes, because yeah. John wanted to have Mike Bichetti on, and then Mike Bichetti canceled on John, yeah. and then John's like, and then you show up on Kevin's show? It's so yeah. funny that all of a sudden, Mike Bichetti's the hot chick that everybody wants to yeah. have a date with. What the fuck did that happen? He told me he was getting ready for an audition. <laughs> I thought you were washing your hair, Mike. Yeah. Oh, you washed your hair real quick, didn't you? <laughs> and that's another thing where I'm watching Mike on fucking, I'm like, why do you keep letting them shit on you, Mike? And then every other minute I'm laughing at the way he responds when they shit on. Your mother is blowing people under, yeah. not, not a bridge, the Holland Tunnel. Not under the GW, not under the, 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 the Brooklyn Bridge. 
under the Holland Tunnel, which I believe rests on the sea floor. Yeah, that would be tired. Yeah. Be I hard like to do. how honest and earnest he was. He was like, when I'm here, I, I could just really be myself. Yeah, I'm a dinosaur. <laughs> I fucked the motor in the ass. Like, <laughs> I like that. Oh, my God. <laughs> Indian Bra 2 Buck says, if only Mike could have seen John's face yesterday. Hmm. I'm glad I didn't. Keanu, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Percy Sweetwater, 10 bucks, says, Keanu, can you pass a note to Kate in gym to find out if she likes Chad as more than a friend? <laughs> I will do my best. Yeah. Uh, oh, she circled maybe. Check one. <laughs> Jury's out. A queef in the night, one of my favorite uh, YouTube names right here. Oh, what? I can't say I jack off to you after all I done for you. I, oh, my God. <laughs> then why were you wearing those pants? <laughs> The, the obsession with the pants that you're wearing. And then as soon as you said that you talked to him like he's a kindergartner, he's like, and her body sucks. Like, yeah, I know. He, said he went from, <laughs> wow, what a figure, to, and she's not that pretty. Her body <laughs> yeah. sucks. I'm like, okay. Well, well, you, I, I actually dodged a bullet in this whole thing because I broke that. When he, when he talked about Keanu, yeah. I played a bunch of clips on my show calling John a pig and disgusting and everything. Yeah. And John tweeted out, I'm going to go after blind Mike for like white knighting for Keanu or something. And I was rubbing my hands together. I was like, all right, Johnny, give me a week of shows. And yep. he just never discussed me. I don't know what happened. God hey, damn it. It's, it's almost like, God. yeah, it's, it's almost like he's not an intelligent person. who knows how to do show prep. He's a drunk. And figure it out. Uh, Nimrob 71 says, Gino and Keanu, America's sweetheart. Stancil sucks. Thank you, Nimrob. I love Stancil. He's insane. Dude. I was very annoyed with Stancil when he told oh, John he not, not to. Annoying. What I miss? He well, this is going back to when I had my falling out with Kevin Brennan, when I had this big show. We were promoting it for weeks. It was going to be Carl and John one v one. Oh, with and the guitars was, and stuff. Yeah. Well, that wasn't the point. But yes, there we. <laughs> I did pull out a guitar at one point to goof on John's songwriting. But uh, yeah, so I, so John goes on Kevin's show right before we're supposed to start at six o'clock. I see John hop on MLC as I'm preparing my final notes for the show. And Kevin Brennan's going, I don't think you should do it. Carl's been talking shit about you. Don't even go on there. And Jim Stancil's going, hey, hey, yeah, hey, hey, don't do it, John. Hey, hey, hey. I'm like, Stancil, I fucking DM. I'm like, what the fuck, man? I've been promoting this show. I can't wait to finally talk to John 1v1. You're going to tell him not to do it? Why? What are you doing? The, the problem with Stancil is, and I've yelled at him, he's a pro wrestler. 90% of his tweets are fucking memes of Vince McMahon. And I was, and he gets out over his skis, as I like to say yes. sometimes. And like he fucking, you saw that. Time he, he invited like three fucking black thugs off the elevator into the show and he starts saying all this shit, they're racist, your fans suck. And he fucking finally oh comes God. back a month later. And he's like, well, now that I'm not banned, I said, you were never banned. I said, you came back because you could finally face us. You fucking couldn't face us. And you have to talk to him like, like a fucking kindergartner. Child. Well, Hold on. you know what, Gino, I, I want it. to, I want to explore this more, but let's save this for the Jim Stancil round table show that we do on Tuesdays. What's it called? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Taking a stencil. There you go. I like it. Uh, Mechanical Ape says, John slut shaming a woman on International Women's Day. Not very woke of him. Not very at all. Also, I, mean, I have a college degree. Uh, he's. I just read that tweet. I'm going to oh, share oh. it. <laughs> that, that's the, the weirdest thing is John equates intelligence to degrees for some reason. And then, and then it gets even crazier because then he talks about what school you went to and what it's ranked. And then that describes intelligence. But the problem with that argument, I mean, there's many. The biggest problem is that apparently Ray DeVito has an MBA. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm like... And and Kumia dropped out of high school. <laughs> and yeah. who is yeah. leaps and bounds smarter than John. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, just, from, just from the way he speaks and how funny he is and whip smart. I mean, I don't... I no, You can't equate a degree with intelligence. No. And, but I have one. I went to the College of Charleston, John. You know that. Yeah. Well, you know ooh. that, John. <laughs> That's right. You told, you told him that. That's right. Because he always has to ask that because he wants to show off to you. So I, I remember when... I don't know if he was on your show. I think he was on your show. Yeah. And he's asking you about your degree, but it's only because he wants to be like, I went to NYU. Right. But exactly. Again, yeah. trying to impress you, like you said. Why don't you show us your dog's, you know, diploma from <laughs> yes. dog school again? Yeah. Yeah. 
Carl, you said it perfect. I think it was you. I was watching it one time. You said it's like, John thinks, he's like, I have a immense, I have an IQ. John thinks an IQ question is, what is the capital of Vermont? He thinks that's <laughs> an IQ question. And it's not. It's, it's like, not. it's like, if he ever went against Kumia, you said, Kumia would, I'd love to know Kumia's IQ. And I know it sounds like I'm simping good one, boss, but like you listen to him talk, it's like, yeah. This guy, I don't care what, no one cares what his degree is. You're like, that guy makes sense. Well, I would argue that it's much more difficult. And I heard John on the show today or yesterday say that he's more famous than Anthony Cumia. Uh, he and, did say it. Uh, yeah. He did say it. And <laughs> I'm did. like, where on earth do you get off <laughs> saying that? He's so, he's so stupid. Oh, God. John, in John's mind, he was third Mike on the Howard Stern show. Right. You have to remember that. Like it was, it was the Howard Stern and Suttery John show is the way that John remembers being John on that show. Was supposed to be the second mic for Artie, but for Anthony, but Artie right. told him not to. And <laughs> it's all, it's all so stupid. Stop. But yeah, so I, I would argue that it's much more impressive to be a tin knocker, have some parody songs, get asked to come on a show a couple times, and then be so good that you become the co-host of a show that yeah. ends up as a national morning show. Your name's on the fucking channel yeah. on XM and Sirius. That's way more impressive than being hired as an intern because you have a stutter. Exactly. Yeah. Because you don't, he never had a stutter. Do you really think John has a stutter? You know what I think it is? I, I, I've been, I've changed my mind on this over the years. John doesn't stutter. Right. But when he does stutter and stammer, it's because he's either lying or nervous. So what they found out was when he talks to celebrities or when he was on the radio when he was in his early 20s, this is how it's stern. Because he's a, a nervous Nelly. He's like a Chad Zumach. Uh, yeah. That, yeah. He, Chad he can't handle his own nerves <laughs> and emotions. He he delivered maybe my favorite line. I think it was after he uh, kicked off Keanu, or maybe it was the day before, I can't remember. He kicked me but off he, before he started stuttering. <laughs> he, he, he started uh, rattling off his resume and he goes, I've worked with kids with stutters, even cured a few. Oh. <laughs> Which I thought was such a great line. He cured them. <laughs> he cured them, I know, it's fucking crazy. <laughs> he's, he claims that he's changed children's lives. These are kids who are 11 to 12 years old, and he was their substitute for a semester, and he changed so, their lives. So did Epstein. He changed children's lives. <laughs> That's true. That's <laughs> not a good brag, I guess. Jeez, Louise. <laughs> Dang Lizard with five euros says, but Sterling John is honest. He talks about his hemorrhoids, his foot odor, and being Puerto Rican. Is someone not using the officially approved insults? Yeah, that's a good point. He's like, you can bust my balls. Tell me my feet smell. I don't I've, want to know what your feet smell right. like, you know, and I don't know that about you, so I can't comment on it, but. Uh. I do love, and this is going back years now, where he would talk about how he's Puerto Rican, as if that's something that is something we can make fun of. It's like, sure. I don't care that you're Puerto Rican, Chow, what do you mean? Well, he's really suffered as a minority, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know. Everyone, look, who's this Puerto Rican man, John Melendez? <laughs> Butthead Melendez says John wants KP to give him ATM guy stuff. I think he does. <laughs> what asked about uh, Seamus McAnus five bucks says Pat should have followed up with eight more. Hackamania has more talent than Gino can ever leach onto. Oh, oh. damn it. Damn it. Damn. Gauntlet's thrown. Oh, Pat boy. Dixon, I'll say it again. Hilarious on stage, but he will have you believe if I'm in a chat, he's like, oh, I, I can't be here if Gino's in a chat. Because just like the John thing, he can't fucking have you speak truth. He's like, oh, I, I got to go. Yeah, find that on the fucking report, idiot. Oh, you know what? I, this isn't a super chat, but it's a text from my buddy Vinny Paulino. Love Vinny. He says, ask Keanu what she thinks of John's cool hair. Oh, you know, it, it just, it falls just right. You know, His hair is ridiculous. It's, What's it's he ridiculous. doing? No, it's, it's terrible. You know. And that's me <laughs> saying that. Me. He's got that one little, my mom was talking about, she's like, what the fuck is this little greasy little yeah. bang here? I'm like, I never noticed that. Because I, I was oh. looking in was a it. greasy little bang. Thank you. Thank Ew. you very much. Well done. Try the veal. Try the All right. <laughs> so, John's got this weird, and greasy is the right word, this weird thing that hangs down his forehead. And because he doesn't have his camera set in mirror mode, which you can do, it's pretty easy to toggle that, he constantly swipes at his face the wrong way. So he, you watch him just miss, miss it over and over again. And, ah, Jesus. It's one of the funniest things he does. Uh, Puddin' Toot, 
Five bucks. Says, SJ is like a typical narcissist. You're either with him or against him. Yes. No, that that's 100% the case. And that's what I find so disingenuous about Kevin Brennan and Stuttering John is they can't have someone on with a different point of view and have a discussion about it. They have to kick them off immediately and block them and never talk to them again. Right. I mean, not, what's the last time you guys happened. were on Misery Loves Company? I know I'm not allowed over there anymore. No, I haven't been for, for a couple years now. <laughs> right. Gina Nothing has, has happened. In the, ahead, sorry. In, in the last like three years that I've been watching John and Kevin Brennan and these people, nothing has happened to warrant either of them being as angry as they have <laughs> to get every single day right. for their business model to work. Like it's the only way. Have. Exactly. That's, that's the right. only way they keep getting super chats is if they get that angry, but in, nothing happens to them. <laughs> in Kevin's defense. And I say this all the time. I don't think any. I'd say he's 10 times funnier than his brother, but he, you can't multiply by zero. He's infinitely funnier than Neil Brennan. And if you woke up every day and he, all Kevin cares he's about He's infinitely is, poorer as yeah, well. <laughs> all he cares about is money. And you know your funny brother is a multi-millionaire. And you are fucking listening to Mike Fischetti say your mom blows people under the Holland Tunnel. You'd be angry. You'd be angry, Mike. Hey, hey G Gino. <laughs> yeah. Shut the fuck up, asswipe, and suck my cock. <laughs> We don't we don't stick up for Kevin Brennan on this show. No, I'm just kidding. Sorry, I'm, sorry. I'm totally joking with you. I am happy to say we have a uh, a guest coming on the show, mm. popping on to hang with us, and that would be one Casey Armstrong in the Yay! house. Hey, what's up, how, Casey? How you doing? Hey, uh, uh, Miss Keanu, uh, nice to meet you. I haven't nice met you before, you. but it, it's a pleasure, Mister Gino. Uh, we go way back. It's and been over a we used to do the shows at Caroline's and get hammered when you were cool and drank. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. Blind Mike, nice to see you and Carl always as handsome as ever. Thank Dude, you. Thanks. Guys. Thank you. Sir. Uh, by the way, I know there were a lot of rumors that you were gay back when you were on the Howard Stern show. So I'm I'm really glad you came on the first thing you said was how handsome I look. I'm very That's, good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, Incredibly. <laughs> Casey, thank you so much for joining the program. I appreciate you being here. Have you been following the uh, the week that was with SJ? Um, you know, everybody knows that I am not a fan of this gentleman. Um, <laughs> I, I, I really, really, he puts me off my fucking lunch, this guy. Yeah. Yeah, he's, a, he's a horrible human being. Um, I... I, I and that's coming from me. I don't put many people down. I, I, I don't uh, make fun of many people. But this guy just fucking hits every button, like the fucking the user button, the fucking liar button, the, uh, the making fun of, um, uh, you know, women uh, for having uh, relations. vaginas. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. He fucking hates everybody. So yeah. well, what, I, what I love about you, Casey, because you push his buttons more than most people. <laughs> and the reason is because you know exactly what he did on the Howard Stern show. And yeah. he hates he hates that. Oh this my is the, god. He want he <laughs> wants to blow up what he did on the Stern show. He's the head writer. He did all these things, all these bits. And meanwhile, Casey will come out and be like, Yeah, he wasn't even in the meetings. He didn't use the software that all the writers used. He had nothing to do with anything. We never asked him his advice on anything that we were doing on the show. He answered the phones. He didn't even do that well. Right. Uh, you know what, man. The, the one thing I'll give him, you, you can always find like the shittiest person. You can always find something good about the shittiest person. He was good at tattling, at yes. telling on people. Yep. Uh, like, like he could tell, uh, it, you know, if, if uh, somebody uh, forgot their, uh, their money to pay for breakfast, which he did every day. He never paid for a fucking thing. Of course. But, uh, you know, anytime someone did something wrong, that's the only time that you wanted him in the studio and there are times Carl that you'll love this. Uh, Howard would look at me and Gary and go, John, what, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. And it's funny because Jason Kaplan took over that role after John left, he became the tattletale guy. And <laughs> everyone hates Jason Kaplan. He's so unlikable. Yeah. That's, that's not a good, position to be playing on a show where it's like well i love richard christie i love sal i love Matt. So i love all these guys and then you have the guy that comes in and be like this guy's an asshole you know what he did this weekend you're like oh right. fuck off yeah right 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 i mean but you know it, you know it, it, it's down to the basic i'm sorry mike go ahead no go ahead well i was gonna say it just goes down to the, the most basic of uh juvenile third grade bullshit 
where you're going to tell on somebody for, you know, uh, throwing a ball and it breaks a window, you know, uh, but but now we're adults and we're supposed to not do that anymore. But John uh, seems to carve out a niche for himself by, you know, by telling on people who threw balls in the window. Yes. John yeah, used to use it for good. behavior, right? Yeah, yeah, kindergarten, like kindergarten behavior. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead, Mike. Wow. It was a, it was a skill that I do think like is important for a radio show because if someone does something you can goof on off air, it's good to have a guy that will bring that on there. That's an important skill, yeah. and it gave yeah. people a lot of laughs. But now John uses that same skill to go after people in through litigation or something. <laughs> right? He's <laughs> sixty or something now, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. It's a little right. different. I got to get caught up on uh, on some super chats real quick. So Dang Lizard comes in with five euros. He says, Keanu is too much of a harlot to deserve a tribute by a fancy gentleman such as John. Fancy. He has thus retracted his offerings. Oh, my gosh. Well, he's still jerking <laughs> off to me, I assure you. But <laughs> yeah, I, I, I heard that. Can I ask Mr. Gino, um, you know, um, how did you feel about uh, a man coming out and saying that he's uh, thinking of y y your you are better half in that way. I mean, what did it make you feel like? And I know how it made uh, Kiana feel. She could give a fuck less. Right. Uh, she's probably disgusted too, but uh, but that's, it, it's repulsive, but I don't care. But this, yeah. right. <laughs> this, yeah. this is like, I said from the get go and, it, and I just said before you got her, it fucking all came to fruition. It's like Keanu can handle herself, you know, right, and, the same, right. and people are like, Oh, Gino, like all the people that think, Fucking, you know, the dabble verse is real and it's the Wild West and Pat Dixon is nothing more than an Adderall fucking abusing idiot who hits women. You can uh, check that. Back there. People that think that, he's a fucking meth head. Uh, <laughs> the people that think that think I'm like getting all pissed and I'm like, Kiana knows exactly what she's doing. She's going on a show. She's trying to be nice to him. She's getting viewers in the dabble verse, whatever. And then when he collapses on himself, because getting back to what Blind Mike said about all he does now because that's all he ever learned he still thinks radio is being a tattletale is you know <laughs> all this is getting shit on by other people he never learned how to broadcast so but, of course when he was doing that and people were texting me i was just like keanu can handle herself and well, then yesterday yeah. she it's, not the, it's not the first time a man uh, you know, has uh, had those thoughts uh, uh, about your your your, your lovely. Hey, uh, wait, wait, could you imagine wait. if I did this? Hey, hey, I'll talk. Could you imagine if I did that, or if I went? <laughs> oh, could you imagine if I told Keanu, like, hey, Keanu, stop talking to you. Like, it's laughable. I wish she would do that to you. <laughs> Shun. <laughs> now pause. Shun. And then I'll unshun Sorry, you. Shun. <laughs> we have no autonomy over who jerks off to us. Correct. Anybody on the internet, I don't care if you're reading the Bible on the internet. Somebody is reading the Bible along with you, jerking off into the pages, and they're all stuck together. If you're on the internet, somebody's jerking off to you. Somebody's jerking off to you. That might be that might be blasphemy, Ooh, what you just it's said. It's true. It's, okay, that's a, 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 that's a probably not. <laughs> Oh, Bro, I did it this morning on the line to the bank. Oh boy, this is too much. Now, Gino, I, I just want to say, what what did I text you, Gino? Do you remember what I told you? Uh, this was a few weeks ago. Which, just refresh. I, I told Gino, I just want you to know, I do not jerk off to your fiance. <laughs> it's funny in this day and age, we got to say that. Uh, <laughs> I didn't have to. I just thought it was funny. <laughs> you know, it's and age. Respect, you didn't have to say that. <laughs> didn't I say I do jerk off to your wife, though, Carl? Yeah, I think you did. Yeah. <laughs> Headband going like, yeah, you take a nap, Carl. You take a nap. <laughs> Put that mandolin up my ass. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Collins. Oh God! Somebody, somebody could be jerking off to stuttering John right now. You never know. It's the uh, internet. It's the internet. Not. Lock you that person know. up. Lock that person <laughs> up right now. He's probably the one <laughs> person on the entire internet that no one is jerking off to. That might be. The <laughs> Bill Collins two bucks says, "I guess this is Carl's <laughs> shitty PDP." I guess you're right, Bill Collins. Thanks for oh, hanging uh -huh. out. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Appreciate it. You and uh, over 1,600 other people watching live. We appreciate that. Thank you very much. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons while you're here. And uh, I'll remind everyone, WATPlive.com is where you can come see us live in Largo, Florida, near Tampa, March 22nd. Come down and watch the live show. It's going to be a lot of fun. Is Blind Mike going too? Blind Mike will no. not be there. Mike's uh, He's a world traveler himself. He's got a lot of things going on. Okay. okay. I wasn't invited. <laughs> well, I asked you about it. You were traveling the next week. So I didn't want to. That was true. Busy your schedule. Uh, put in two, five bucks says Chad's glasses look like Oriental eyes glasses. Chad's glasses do. Yeah, I guess. 
<laughs> I can see that. Johnny Russo, have you have any of you been close enough to actually smell Stuttering John? I imagine similar to a porta potty at a reggae <laughs> festival in <laughs> August. <laughs> Pre-order Spare Me, John Gets Destroyed, Kumia Wins. Yes, Anthony Kumia has a new book out that Johnny Russo helped uh, put together, and you can pre-order that, Spare Me, it's called. And, uh, yeah. John's, John's gross. Have you? Oh, yeah, you smelled. So you've been close oh, to the smell. Yeah, he, he, he sat two decks, desks over. He never showered in the morning, came in with tank tops, and I'm like, sleeves, oh. please. You got to, you know, you, 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 you don't walk around uh you know with with arms like that uh and no sleeves so you tell the guy politely sleeves please yeah and and then maybe next day he would listen to you but no he didn't give a shit it would be that dude where's my car where's my car shirt that he got made into a tank top and it was yeah. uh, <laughs> no well, scruples there's I, no self-awareness whatsoever none, none you just reminded me casey that i told vince the lawyer because vince the lawyer went through John's jeans when they were <laughs> at the suite together in AC because John left him in the middle of the bathroom floor in a bathroom that he's sharing with multiple other people. He just leaves his clothes there. Well, and, why wouldn't he? Uh, uh, he's entitled, Carl. Of course, you know I know. That? I know. It's John's world. We're living in it. But I told Vince, and I think he's kicking himself. He should have cut them into Daisy Dukes because John only brought one pair of pants. <laughs> that would have been hilarious if on Super Bowl Sunday he comes down in his Daisy Dukes to hang out with everyone. Wow. God. Wouldn't have been great for everyone else, but funny God. for me. It's just so hot. Wendy, <laughs> Wendy's cat five bucks says, I said yesterday on Rico, the fact the government lets someone like Army Major carry live grenades blows my mind. That dude is a certified nut job. I will curb <laughs> stop anyone who says Richard O'Jen is a nut job. He's a very sane and rational man. <laughs> He's a lunatic. <laughs> oh, it's fun though. You know. I'm starting to think, Gino, maybe you can weigh in on this one. I'm starting to think that spending two decades in Afghanistan and Iraq was a bad idea. <laughs> no. I think, I think some people are fucked in the head from that. I don't know. Call me crazy. Look at toll on people. <laughs> yeah, Bob doing a COVID test, two bucks says, Kate Meany is about as hot as an ice cube. Yes. Well, we're not we're not here to bash that flabby armed, big chinned Kate Meany. Yes. All right. She's, she's dead John's from the words. neck up. She so can't as help of, it. As of last night at 8 p.m. is prettier than you now. I don't know if you know. Yes, oh, correct. God, what am I gonna do? The, 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 the polling oh. shifted. It, it was like the it was like the election. The polling just shifted at two o'clock in the morning. And Amazing suddenly, how that happens. Yeah. Oh, ever changing you know scale. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I saw the live odds. I was betting on it, and uh, <laughs> and it totally it totally switched it, within four hours. I thought I had this. Thing well, it was call. crazy because I was trying to see how that happened, but they were covering the windows. So I wasn't able to peek yeah. in and see how they were counting the votes. It was What's up with that shit. How did that happen? Slow Adam two bucks says John I hope Steve does... Martin isn't watching. He'll be upset. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Steve, Steve, I love you. I love three amigos. Slow Adam says John deserves this. He was mean to me. <laughs> yeah, well, he does. If he was mean to Slow Adam, Slow Adam's a nice guy. I know yes. that guy, and he's, he's a, a, nice he's a, a, a sweetheart of a man. All right, Keanu, fuck, Mary, kill, Ray DeVito, Kate Meany, Steel Toe, Aaron. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Fuck, Mary, kill. Let's go. <laughs> this is a horrible scenario. <laughs> it always is. Fuck, Mary, kill is never that e easy. You better kill Ray DeVito. Well. And you do the Chinaman thing and fall on a sword? So Hold on. Cheeto. That, I am take, docking a point for that right there. Done. You could not. Oh, yes. Shun. She's got to answer this question. Fair enough. Shun. You're right. I apologize. Shun. Shun. Thank you. Okay, so since Ray DeVito has killed so many on <laughs> on the highway, I, I have to on Highway I eighty. I have to kill Ray DeVito. Okay, and then I would never marry Kate Meany because since she's so dead from the neck up, it would just be unstimulating. Oh, so I would. So you're fucking fuck Kate her, Meany. and then I suppose since we're already swingers with the steel All toes, the I would marry Aaron. There you go. There you go. You've, you've given you John a lot to jerk to. I would here. allow it. Okay. I, I don't know if you, uh, uh, um, a Botard Ray's here. Hey, I uh, did a, a, a set. Hey, Ray. I was uh, talking about uh, things that I did. You guys might have done it, but I have done that way before you did it because I did that first. <laughs> Can, can you reenact the C-word bit with that puppet, Casey? What's the C-word bit? Uh, don't worry about it. All right, Mason in Portland comes in. Member for three months says, 
Army Major going off and getting angry at chat members on Stuttering John's political show is never not funny. Ojeda belongs in the funny farm. <laughs> it's never not funny. I agree with you on that. Yen Zen, two bucks. Why would anyone let Grandma Andrea mod their chat? I believe Good Mike question. does that. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know why. Hackride told me I'm supposed to, so we've been doing it. And I don't know what it's added to the channel. People tell me it's taken away. I, I don't know what's happening. Interesting. It seems useless to me, but we're going to keep doing it, I guess. Well, Andrew will be at uh, WTPLive.com, Largo, March Ooh. 22nd. And uh, she's got her ticket. She's coming to that show. Uh, Seamus McAin is two bucks. Gino is realizing Keanu has more on-air talent. I've known that for quite some time. You stop it. I've known that for quite some time. <laughs> Don't make me blush. Shun. <laughs> Unshun. Dang lizard, five euros. <laughs> The funniest thing Melton did to Suttering John is adding an AI voice representing John's firstborn son called Lady K for night, but Carl called them losers. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, you did. That's a good point, yes. Uh, Michael P. Five bucks says, after all these failed relationships and it is still not March 10th, count your blessings, VP. Go Bills. You, you see, it's very interesting because... <laughs> I did a, a gig at, uh, on, on March 10th. It, uh, it was me, and I was doing a set at the uh, at the store. <laughs> All right, Ray, that's walked. enough out of you. That's uh, enough out of you, Ray DeVito. <laughs> You're taking over the show. I, I won't say who Ray. Ray DeVito is. It's all about Ray. <laughs> uh, no, Michael P., this is a very good point, because this weekend is the weekend that Suttering John was supposed to do a stand-up show in Rochester, New York, at Comedy at the Carlson, March 10th. And this, he was promoting it, and he sold, I think, 80 tickets or so. He he sold a bunch of meet-and-greet tickets. This was going to happen. Oh. And then he canceled. And one of the reasons why he canceled is because March 9th, tomorrow night, Saturday night, we are doing live podcasts, Subreddit Surfing, which is Vinnie Paulino and Cardiff Electric, as well as All Apologies. We'll be uh, doing live podcasts. I have to go up and do a stand-up set that Cardiff is writing for me as one of my <laughs> consequences from the creep-off. Nice. So if you are in Western New York, if you're in the area, we have people coming in from Canada, people coming in from all over. That is this weekend. Uh, CarlsonComedy.com is where you can get tickets for that. But yeah, it was. it's too bad. John's his one stand-up show that he had booked, and he begged Vinnie Paulino to get that gig. And, uh, it's a you great can't place, I've heard, right? It's an awesome venue. Yeah, we did DabbleCon oh, You're going to knock it out, Carl. You're going to do great. Everybody knows it. No, I'm not. It's, it's going to be a terrible stand-up <laughs> set. Carnival is setting you up to fail. All right, no, it's all good. It's going to be very good. We know. All right. The, yeah, the, no Irish, seen before. the Irish Chinese Brock O'Lee coming in with two bucks said, what did she say about my cousin Brock? <laughs> Don't worry about it. One eye with two Aww. Australian dollars. It's Keanu is a vision of unsurpassed loveliness. <laughs> Oh, I'm blushing. Thank do you. you. Want, do you want to take out your phone and take a photo of that before? That's all uh, right. Yeah. I'll yeah, jerk off to it later. No. Uh, it's all right. <laughs> Seamus McAnus, five bucks, says, back during COVID when Gino was late about late. everything and never shut up about it, drive more regular viewers away, you unfunny heck. <laughs> I love these. This guy hates you, and he's been here the whole time. Uh, laziest man on Mars, five bucks. Carl, is your current haircut still being ironic? Did I miss another bet? Fat <laughs> made from 1996. Uh, oh, yeah. Fat fade from 1996. Going to the LFO concert tonight, you'll blend. <laughs> Fair enough. I see what you did there, sir. It's very uh, hurtful. Mm -hmm. The Looney Tunes critic of two bucks says, my character is a guy who lacks character. That's great. That's hilarious, That's Looney Tunes great. critic. Because <laughs> we were talking fun. earlier, Casey, that John now has decided that stuttering John is a character that he plays, much like Robin Quivers what? announced that she's not who she is on the radio. She's playing a character. She's uh, not the biggest narcissist of all time. I no, mean, that's just a radio personality. <laughs> oh, so so we're supposed to believe that this stuttering John is just a bit like Anthony Cumia told us uh, a year ago, which was the most brilliant thing I've ever heard. If it was a bit. It would be the most brilliant character ever, yep. but no, that's that fucking guy. There he's is like, there is no way around it. That's him. He's like, that's a great angle. I could, I could <laughs> use that. Why didn't I think of that? Because <laughs> you don't well, think. <laughs> it, well, it's interesting because people who know John are always shocked that he is that person in real life. They're like, well, he, he must be hamming it up on his show. It's like, oh no, he really is this big of a an asshole all the time. Go figure. Mm -hmm. 
Although I will say that John has turned into performative John over the last few months. And, and you really, hate that, Carl. Since he entered the dabble verse. Now he does this thing where he acts out like his outrage over things and it's fake and lame. And didn't you guys make that point when you were doing that, uh, whatever, the, the stuck thing in uh, fucking upstate New York? Like if you offer, jo if John came, that would be like the best thing for him. Yes. Yeah, he would get a, a standing ovation. I believe yes. so. If John came out of the stage. This this just popped into my mind, and I thought it was the most bizarre interaction. We had Ian Halpern on yesterday. He goes, uh, he goes, Ian, you've been great. I hope you, you'll come back on soon, right? And Ian's like, absolutely. And he goes, you're not going to blow me off, are you? <laughs> and Ian was like, no, why? What? He didn't like, didn't even understand it. But that's like the the reaction that John has to people is he always thinks someone's going to wrong him in some yeah. way. Yeah, he, he assumes that he's going to treat him the way everyone else does <laughs> yeah. and never want to talk to him again. But that that's weird. I didn't catch that part of it, but I saw the beginning where Ian Halpern's just like, yeah, I'm here to promote this movie. That's yeah. the reason why I'm here. It's like, well, why would you become a regular on your show, John? He's here to promote a movie. He's doing the rounds. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, you got to come is. back, Ian. <laughs> right. And Gino, Gino, you're a betting man. I mean, what would you say the over-under is on John's relationships? I mean, with anybody, male oh. or female? I, I give it four days as the over-under. I'm telling you, it's basically, I'd say nine and a half days. I really would. Okay, yeah. Because All right, it might be it, higher than what we were just sure. talking about. It's like when you're honest with him, he lets you in like, okay, this is a real person actually talking to me. But when you're honest with him, eventually you point out you're being a creep. That's <laughs> not true. You're an idiot. No, no, you can't say that. And that's what Keanu did. She was I, nice to him. And he's like, no, I'm not flirting uh, with her. I don't think I could bang her. And the second she's like, you're acting like uh, a kindergartner. It's like, I can't bang her. I hate her. I would venture <laughs> to say I was probably one of the nicest people ever to him. That doesn't say much. Have you seen the people talking? <laughs> right. And I don't blame people for being like, laughing at him and making fun of him. But I found him entertaining. So I thought, I'll be nice to this man. But you say one offhanded, lighthearted comment about him quelling his douchebaggery right. and calling him a kindergartner. I mean, it's World War Three. It's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> Keanu, do you think, did you get any vibes that during your your uh, your friendship that uh, he ever said anything uh, that was quite uh, uh, creepy? Uh, not, not in a way uh, that he says out loud, like I jerked off to, uh, you know, Miss Keanu, but did he ever say anything to you uh, that you were just like, this is, I, I, I think I got to, get away from this because this is weird i didn't find it creepy at all i so found it like i'm so like well, shun <laughs> uh, and then i'll unshun shun i didn't <laughs> find him i didn't find him creepy it's like talking to your weird uncle or something you know, <laughs> Whoa, hold, hold, hold on a second. Time out. You didn't make that any better. It's like talking to your weird uncle who wants to fuck you. Wait, your what? Weird, <laughs> your, your, your weird uncle by marriage. Right? <laughs> oh, that makes it okay. All yeah, right, fair enough. Like uncle, uncle. It's See a, you at Thanksgiving. Wink. I have a. I don't know. I have a bandwidth for douchebaggery. I don't know yeah. why, but I find it entertaining. Yeah. It's like it, he's not going to do anything. I'm not offended by it. I'm not like, oh my god, he's offended me. I'm so scared it obviously he's a creep right. uh and hopefully he quelled his erection while he was talking to me but <laughs> i i i found it entertaining not like um aggressive or harmful in any way i just thought it was sort of cute gotcha not nothing you had to tell gino about like no i mean like well he made me feel really uncomfortable i thought you felt no. bad for him at the Point. Yeah, I like, know. I do feel is, bad for him. This is the only yeah. way he can talk to people. That's what well, I'm saying. In Atlantic City, when we saw him like interacting in life, I do. I have a bleeding heart. I do feel bad. He was lovely at our show. He was just there in his blazer wanting to hang out with people. <laughs> and like, bad. that makes me like, yeah, I always want to sit with the kid that's sitting alone at the lunch table. <laughs> You know what I mean? That's yeah. just who I am. So I know exactly what you mean. Sweet. But Very sweet. Yeah. The thing about John, and he doesn't realize this, is that he's always hitting on attractive women. That's the only way he knows how to interact with women. Often married, by the way. Yes. Oh, yeah. He doesn't care. He doesn't care about that. Because Missy B was talking about on Keanu's show about how John was hitting on her when right. he was over at her house with Anthony playing cards and just openly hitting on her. And the way he talks to Kate Meany on the phone, I mean, this is his words, not mine. Talking about how she bangs her boyfriend and shit. Like, this is not a normal conversation you have with someone 
this is really weird that everything's sexual and he's just talking about sexual stuff with these younger girls who he right. finds attractive the pictures is, and shit Come this on. is why everyone thinks you're a creep john this is creepy behavior me and missy were talking about that i for some reason i just have a bigger bandwidth for it i mean because i'm yeah. just like i could take care I, I just, I don't get offended. I'm just like, what? where do you get off? You're so ridiculous. I have to see where this I, I would feel if I said the things like Keanu and I have hung out a few times. Yeah. If I said anything, the stuff that John says to you, I would be so embarrassed that I, yeah. I'd probably quit the internet. I, bet, I can't, I can't fucking believe I told Keanu I jerked off to her. What the fuck was I thinking? But also, and I'm doing a show, so I'm like, this is great. He's saying all of these things. <laughs> sure, I'm like, sure, yeah. I can't, I can't do anything. I'm like, oh my god. Right. But I, it doesn't, it doesn't offend me. It's, uh, it's just the lack of scruples or self awareness. It's, it's just like I like to. I can't stop watching it. It doesn't, but yeah, no, yeah. we're all in the same boat. That's why we're here yeah, talking exactly. about it every week on Point Devil Points. He used to say <laughs> something that was so disturbing. He would, he would say, "Hey, if I go up to a hundred people and I say, hey, do you want to go up to my room and make out?' One or two of them is going to say yes, uh. and that's the <laughs> that's the creepy uh, piece of shit that that guy is. Those words came out of his mouth. Is that what he said? He would say that to, to women and, and uh, numbers game. Blind Mike. That's what yeah. his, his whole thing was. It's a, it's yeah. a numbers game. Yeah, yeah. It's fine if you're a salesperson, but not if you're a rapist. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, it's All like right. I sit with the loser at the lunch table and somebody wrote, Thanks for explaining how you could possibly be with Gino. Nice. <laughs> 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 I love that Gino is just distracted by the chat because you don't get this on in hot on in hot water. You don't get this uh, instant feedback from people. So good. Nimrob seventy one two bucks says, "Mike, seriously, how good does Keanu look?" That's oh, awesome. tremendous! Yeah. I'll, I'll jerk off to it right when we're done. All That's right, sounds fine. good. <laughs> Keanu's stuttering John impression. Thumbs up. Sj pissed today. Yes, he good is. Yeah. Oh, when he was watching you guys and Missy goes into her stuttering John, which by the way is awesome. It Everyone is. knows that. I mean, Missy has hosted the Dabble Battle at a couple of live events where people come and do their stuttering John impressions. And John goes, oh, is she doing me now? Is that who doing an impression of me? <laughs> yes, John, it's all of us are doing it. <laughs> EA Five Bucks says, John was very happy a super chatter asked for more details about jerking off to Keanu when she was on. It's one of the cringiest things I've ever seen. When he was explaining that he finished inside of you, it, yes, it does give me pause. For some reason, it, that's it, worse than jerking off on your face. I don't know why, but for some reason, I was just like, what are you trying to start a family? What the fuck right. is going on? Because it's too loving. It's like, <laughs> yeah. did you look me in the eyes too? Like, ugh. what? What did he write you a personalized card first that you had to read? What the fuck? Oh, God. We started no. looking for houses <laughs> together. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I think I said it on the show. I'm like, oh, so we didn't just buck. We we made love, right? You did, like, yeah. yeah. Your reaction was perfect because you, yeah. you were not faced by it at all, but I, I was. Yeah. Well, no, I, <laughs> I was taking it back. In my vomit, but you know, <laughs> I, can, I can handle his, it. His defense of that to me is so weird. He always says that. He brings it up. Anytime someone calls him a creep, he's like, really? You don't think Howard Stern would say stuff like that? Mm. And A, it's, I mean, Howard Stern was talking to millions of people. John's talking to 150 people watching yeah. him live at one time. <laughs> but also like Howard would do it there was a charm yes. to him like yeah, that's why he would new. get away with it it was a new thing nobody was doing that you know it, it was... there are a lot of elements that allowed Howard to do that in a way that John's not capable of well, right. Howard was a charming everyman he's not anymore obviously but back in the day everyone related to him he had a lot of right. blue collar listeners who related to Howard and and fucking his wife and being frustrated with with sexuality and stuff and so John wants to both brag about how he's got all these chicks and he's fucked all these girls and he doesn't want pizza every night. So he left his family and all this stuff. So he, he doesn't have that same kind of charm and every man thing coming into it. Howard didn't do that. Howard's like, I'm a disgusting nerd that wraps a piece of toilet paper around my penis every right. time I take a piss. Like, yes, that's that that because Howard has self-awareness. John has none. I fucked centerfolds. Yeah. I, 
can but I jerk did, off to you? That's that's not. There's no right. there's no self awareness there. Yeah, he right. he did get a little towards the the other way later in, in in his career, but he always asked about the third input. And John still think that yeah. that's okay to ask uh, women. Yeah, where we think it's uh, lame, old, and we don't care. Right. KC, he's had people on his political show before he was in the Dabbleverse, uh, so to speak. And he would ask, he would ask is. women who were just on there to talk about how Trump sucks, <laughs> and then ask them if they if they take it in the ass. And <laughs> they would be like, "What? What do you? Why am I? I have a book out. Let's yeah, take a break from this I, Me Too I, conversation." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm a published author, uh, and and I, I, do I take it where? Do I? <laughs> yeah, right. And, oh, oh. Laziest man on Mars two box says a BA and a BS from NYU are light years apart. Is that true? I don't know. I have bachelors of whatever. I don't, same to me. Uh, Laziest Man on Mars says $2. I'd love to see John in an organic chemistry class. He does uh, <laughs> teach chemistry. That was one of the he things that he was stuff. substituting for. Dang yeah. Lizard, five euros, says two unrelated sentences. We're over, nice half, over half a million people disappear in the U.S. every year. Ray DeVito is not innocent. <laughs> Eiffel Tower, Bone Lance, super percent off on Ray's Discord. I love Dang Lizard because he changes his icon for every super chat. Oh so now he's got Ray as the Hamburglar. <laughs> That's a lot of work. He's so, yeah, just bit. Fantastic. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Payson in Mortland. This is different than Mason in Portland, apparently. Two box. KC is here. Double nice. Nice. Hey, whatever hey, happened hey. to nice? Remember nice, Mike? Oh, yeah. What did happen to him? I miss nice. He used to super chat us on WATS. Dead on the highway somewhere. Ray DeVito. Uh, Clyde, five bucks, says, I once asked John why every woman he hates suddenly becomes fat, ugly, and not that hot. <laughs> Weird how that works, huh? By the way, he didn't read it. Of course he didn't read it. <laughs> of course he didn't. What a loser. Uh, Sound was too good. KC rules. The Red Bar fan base loves you, KC. Love you. Red Thank Bar you. is watching. Oh. Love Red Bars. Uh, our Yay! buddy, MJ Gill, KC, could John have played wide receiver for <laughs> the Jets in his prime? <laughs> I would have loved to go. I just wanted him to catch one pass or attempt to run one route out there. And we probably would know John as uh, uh, not stuttering John, but sitting John because he'd be in a, in a, in a wheelchair. <laughs> yeah. John famously on the Stern show, John has a very inflated self of himself. You think? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, I forget what, who the tight end was, but he challenged Marco a tight end. Bataglia. Who was it? Marco Battaglia for the Cincinnati oh. Bengals. He challenged Damn. him to a 40-yard dash, right? <laughs> and John got beat by like two seconds, which is yeah. hard to do in a 40-yard dash. Yeah. And I, <laughs> he got and beat I, so I, bad. I told him exactly what he was going to run, and I told him uh, that he was going to run a 5-2 or a 5-4 on the 40-yard dash, which is about what most uh, high school uh, tackles or guards. <laughs> yeah, run. I was going to say, yeah, that's yeah. what the center does, right? right exactly. exactly. <laughs> it's not good. The equipment yeah. manager. <laughs> <laughs> totally true. Exactly. And that's what he ran. Oh, well, I don't know if you remember this, Carl. When John was listing your lies recently, uh -huh. He's like, Carl lied about this. Carl lied about that. He said, I didn't beat Shaq at basketball. Oh, God <laughs> damn it. John, John, you didn't beat Shaq at basketball. I, I have that. Okay. Thank you for saying that, Mike. I have that in my notes because there was a big revelation made this week on Centering John's show. So if you guys haven't seen it, they did a bit for the Tonight Show where John was playing against Shaquille O'Neal in 1v1 hoops because I'm a cool kid. Sure. And... The deal was Shaq had to get to five before John got to one, which oh. I would argue is not basketball. Right. That's a bit, but okay, whatever. Yeah, it's a different game. <laughs> so John, you know, Shaq's not trying very hard, obviously. He's yeah. uh, about a billion times better at basketball than John is. So John steals the ball, throws up a prayer three-pointer, and it goes in, and then John runs around like, well, I'm the greatest basketball player. What's crazy is that John goes around saying he beat Shaq at basketball, which is not true. But what we found out this week is that he shows that video to his class. Oh my God. No, yes. He, he brings up YouTube in the class and shows the kid, shows the kids that video. And he says, the reason why he does it, he says is to inspire them. 
Wow. You you could do whatever you want in life if you put your mind to it. Yeah. I want to here's a chemistry test. Pretty cool. Huh? <laughs> I want to inspire the kids. But what he's really doing is he's showing off. Right. He needs everyone to be like, wow, Mr. Yeah. Melendez is the coolest. Did you see he played basketball with Shaquille O'Neal? Wow. <laughs> what a loser. He needs to be, he needs that validation from everyone all the time. From children. Children. What's that, Sonny Boy? You don't know the periodic table? Here's me draining a three. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like Kramer when he was in that uh, karate class and he's beating up. <laughs> <laughs> That's a perfect analogy. That's, right. and by That's the way, perfect. By the way, like, did you meet Shaq, uh, Casey? Like I've like Shaquille O'Neal is one. Of, I've said this countless times. If you're in a room of ten people. One of them has probably met Shaquille O'Neal, and he's they say he's a giant man with a giant heart, right, KC? And he's the yes. nice he probably let he probably would not yeah. beat John. He's like, I'm not huh. gonna score five. I'm gonna let this fucking retard get one. R yeah. word, sorry. And <laughs> and that's what he he's like the most amazing man ever. Like, I want to meet that guy. I really do, but I heard he's amazing. I can see that he came in and he was uh he was curling Robin, and then the guy next to him. That was carrying around his testicles in the wheelbarrow gave him a high five. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was reviewing Shaq's podcast. I was on the Drew and Mike show and we were playing clips of it. I think Anthony even picked up on this. He was telling a story. Shaq's one of the funniest guys. He's just naturally funny, which is rare for athletes. And Shaq's telling this story about how he was at the zoo and he walked up to the gorilla cage and the gorilla looked at him like, how did you get out? <laughs> <laughs> why, why are you on that side and Shaq's telling the story and everyone's rolling and he's just got such a fucking great sense of humor about himself he's one of the funniest guys so i agree i could see Shaq like giving the ball to john like yeah. go ahead have a shot do you <laughs> remember try, the, the fushnikins he was even doing rapping for a while this is a guy that's very talented he can only yeah. but he just can't shoot foul throws John should be no. a substitute teacher and showing that video to kids that's what he should be doing that's <laughs> you mean Shaq. Oh, excuse me, Shaq. Shaq. Right. Yes. Shun. The, Unshun. Uh, like, where's, where's the hilarious laughter? <laughs> funeral director. So KC. KC143. Whoop whoop. Funeral director is my that's my buddy. Yes, he is. Uh 1971 Puffy with a $20 super sticker. Thank Woo. you very much, Puffy. Puffy said, you know what? I don't have anything to say, but I appreciate this entertainment and we appreciate you. It's 1971 Puffy. Short Fridays just gifted five Casey Armstrong memberships. Short Fridays. Casey comes out and just steals my feed here. I'm sorry, buddy. He's making all the money. Now you're fine. And now another five gifted memberships from Mason in Portland for Casey. you, Casey. Woo! Oh, no, no. That makes me have to go up the top. Oh, great. We'll wait for that. Uh, Dang Lizard, <laughs> two euros. Says, Casey, what happened oh. to... <laughs> What's going on? Now I got to zoom in on this. What what's going on here? Oh, he's wrestling. Hmm. Look off, coach. Sorry, that's all right. I like being on the Casey Armstrong show. This is fun. Yeah, I, I, my, my my bad. It, it, it was ten, so I had to uh, do something. Yeah, else. no, I I understand. I know how these things work. Okay, you understand? Uh, can you can you <laughs> since since you take over your show, I'll let you read the super chat here from Dang Lizard. Okay, buddy. Casey, what happened to the alpaca? He's he was hanging out with coach. He's back there. All right, there's your I'll answer. The asshole. Short Fridays, Mike. Can you not see my super chats? Jeez. Mm, no, I can't. Giving you a lot of uh, <laughs> guff over here. I'm blind. Get it, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Nate G. Two bucks says Ojeda and SJ don't know who Corn Pop is. Pathetic. <laughs> dude, Corn Pop is a bad dude. He How was they a not bad know? dude. How do they not know about that? I, I saw that yesterday. I think John's just so on guard that people are fucking with him. He read that name and goes, I don't know who that is. <laughs> fucking idiot. Sounds right. <laughs> uh, Christy Horsley with 10 gifted. Who are these podcast memberships? All right, KC, go do your thing. Oh, no, no. We got, that, that, we got that, 10 that, gifted you, memberships. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Do Let's do it. From the top ropes. Oh no, he's gonna hurt himself. <laughs> he got an air mattress there. <laughs> this is insane, Mike. You're not missing anything, buddy. I promise you. <laughs> I figured. <laughs> yeah. All right, Kate. Casey, I gotta tell you, man. 
I, I was actually worried for you there when you're, you shouldn't try to jump off a chair that has wheels on it. Oh, I'll do it. I thought you were going to break your neck just now. Yeah, but that's, that's why they give the, the, the stupid chats. I love it. Funeral director, two bucks says SJ has been insinuating Casey is using drugs. Comment. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> all right, we get it. He's cool. We get it. Wow. I don't know about that. It's, yeah, it's been a lifelong uh, uh, battle. Yeah. Drugs are bad. You shouldn't do drugs. That's right, Mr. Mackey. Yeah. Keep drugs I drugs do, are bad. I do my best. Dang Lizard 5 Euro says, let's be reminded that SJ is the only person not allowed to make fun of Ray's ghost roast. He wanted to do the same with a Carl stand-in this Sunday. Thank you, Dang Lizard. This whole thing where Ray's doing roasts of people who aren't on his show, which is weird, oh, right. was what prompted Vinny to tell John, I'm going to let Carl and Shuli come to your show because John decided that the first five or 10 minutes of his show was going to be him with a guy who looks like me on the stage. And he was going to roast that yeah. guy as if it was me. That was it, John's big idea for his show. But if you don't understand how shitty the world has gotten post COVID and let me rephrase that, how shitty people like Ray fucking further the stupidity of post COVID. Like I was showing this on my stream, like, Casey, remember when you used to fucking roast people on the Stern Show? Remember when we would roast people at the Friars? Remember when we had roast battles at the stand and in L.A.? And fucking, that was like a whole scene. It's people roasting people that are friends. And he's like, I hate this guy. So I'm going to just show a, a, a video loop of him while I tell the worst jokes ever about the killing Melendez brothers. It's fucking pathetic what's going on now. Okay, you bring up a good point, Gino. That's a because first. can we rewind? I know, I know. I'm, I'm also shy. That's why <laughs> I said it that way. You bring up a good point because the whole point of roasting is that you actually respect the person yeah. and you're busting their balls. You know, <laughs> yeah. they're going to bust your balls back. I got to know, I guess if you watched the BS show this morning, I guess they talked about it. Remember the Howard Stern roast they did when they moved over to Sirius? Yeah. No, do I? They, they would bring in. Some of the best comics, oh, Nick wait, DiPaolo, no, no, Greg no, no, Giraldo, no, 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 Dave Attell, Colin Quinn. Up, right? They they would yeah, Levy would always host it. They would do these roasts on the Howard Stern show. It was the show once. It was the best stuff. Uh, Sal was phenomenal on those shows, and they would do these roasts. I'm sure the BS Lu Gina was on one of those. I'm sure. I wrote for a couple of them. I was never on one though, but I was okay. always doing the Pharrell show and stuff. Thank you, KC, for Got thinking it. that though. So. The BS show was talking this morning. They want to bring that back. They want to do a roast show similar to that style where it's a, it's a radio show or I mean, I guess, I mean, I guess it would be video these days, but um, you know, we're, we're all just doing it and they want me to be the person they're roasting for the first episode. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, fuck. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I, I love all these guys. I would love to bust their balls back. So it makes a lot of sense. That is actually interesting. And you but can when take you, it. You, you're not a guy that's right. going to get mad. No, of course. I, I I think it's a great idea. I use, I remember listening to those and being fed, endlessly entertained by those roasts on the Howard Stern show. Yeah. So I think it's a brilliant idea. But this idea that like I'm mad at this person and I'm I'm really I I have a personal grudge against them. And so here are some jokes to hurt their feelings. You're like, that's not what a roast is. <laughs> but You're no. doing it wrong. But did you write for the Kareem Abdul Jabbar roast? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I, I'm sorry, I can't stop reading these. They're great. I'm sorry. You got uh, it. You got it. It's 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 brilliant, John. It's all brilliant. It's brilliant. Rest in peace, Richard Lewis. Rest in peace, Richard Lewis. <laughs> Looney Tunes critic says Keanu is not the type to clutch her pearl necklace. Oh, oh God, John. I get it. Rumpled trench coat to Columbo podcast. Five bucks says I think the funniest thing SJ ever did online was thinking he had a shot with Keanu. <laughs> yeah, it's up there with thinking you had a shot with Kate Meany and thinking yeah. you had a shot with Bobby Brown. And I can't uh, list Lisa all the Jordana. chicks. Yeah, yeah I, right, Lisa Jordan. I can't list all of the hot girls In that John friend, thought he was going to fuck. There's no possibility that he po could possibly think that. No, he, he doesn't. He does. Really he, does. Does. he does. He does. And that's why yeah. you broke him when, yeah. it, when it got through his skull. It's like when you said he was a child or whatever. It's like. She's not going to fuck me. And that's when he <laughs> turned on you. It's that simple to me. Yeah. Correct. And then you turn into like, you, you know, the, from the most uh, beautiful, sexy, uh, when you say no, oh, that fucking slut, that whore. That that whore. Yeah. Well, I like Kate Meany now. 
good. It's it's and I was saying <laughs> this earlier. Each other. <laughs> I was saying this earlier, Casey, but yeah. it's very similar to what Kevin Brennan does when he likes you. He'll say, you know, this happened with Bob Levy. Bob Levy's a killer. He does great on stage. He's a very funny comic. And then him and Bob Levy have a falling out. And now Bob Levy's a hack and he's not funny. He was never good on the show. It's just like, ha- this is what they have how- to do. They have to. But how do how do people watch this show and take it seriously? And I'm not saying everyone watching the show takes it seriously. Obviously, they don't. But there's a lot of people who do. They you watch see- guys like Kevin Brennan and they go, yeah, we have to hate Bob Levy now. And we hate Shuli. And it's right. like, dude, why are you taking this guy seriously? Yeah. It, it, it changes with the fucking wind. Yeah, it's like you lose credibility when you do stuff. Yes, like yeah. I think so. Well, it's reality. It's the Real Housewives of YouTube. <laughs> I, I would say, Casey, something. Yeah. I was saying this on WTP recently, where Howard Stern lost me when all of a sudden he liked Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah, I, I was. I was like, hold on a second. Generous is another one. Yeah. Ellen DeGeneres, Chevy Chase. I was like, hold on a second. You've told us to hate this person, and I do. <laughs> Kathy Lee Gifford, you're like, no, no, Howard, you've been telling me for years this person sucks, and I agreed with you, and now you're friends and she's coming on for an interview? That, that sucks. That changed when he went to Sirius, right? Because yeah. I never, I never w- witnessed any of that. He, you know, he was always talking about how the, uh, excuse, excuse me, like, how that cunt smelled and shit like that. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, excuse my language, but no, right. Howard and, 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 you know, everybody loved that because they're like, oh, yeah, my, wow. Um, you know, that's that's kind of um, what I would expect a guy who's, you know, going to push the envelope, say. But then when he went over there, he's like, I like how she dances. Are you shitting me blind, Mike? Right, 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 right. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Yeah, that when was probably he, like six after, years in the series, I think. Yeah. After he said with Ellen, and I don't mind Ellen DeGeneres, but he shit on her dancing for how long? I don't know. <laughs> like, he comes on the show. He's like. I love when you dance down the down the aisle and so I'm yeah. like, oh my God, what is this? <laughs> I didn't like Ellen DeGeneres until I found out she was a total asshole to her <laughs> staff. And then I was like, all right. <laughs> now she's Not winning oh. now she's winning me over with that. Carl, <laughs> own it. <laughs> WSX Buck says, Gino and Keanu are reminding me of a funnier and more likable Rich and Bonnie. Oh. Carl, couples podcasts are usually terrible, but do you think they could pull it off? He comes on my program. I go on his program. Yes, I've okay. seen it. He's got a running gag call. It's a gag, right? She calls into the no. show, says she lost the ring. It's cute. I'm going to lose you it did. again. You've yeah. got it, Frank. We recently reviewed My Wife Hates Me Again. It's been years. I saw but, that. Uh, wow, did they phone that show, Ed? <laughs> <laughs> and I guess Rich is coming back to um, the comedy club here in Rochester again soon. So maybe I'll maybe I'll have him down in the basement here. And we, can, uh, him. we can chat about it. <laughs> Big J Okerson, 10 bucks. Is that really Big J? It might be because I. <laughs> That's what I, I, I can confirm two things. That is because when I saw that, I texted him. I don't mean to brag, Carl, on your behalf. That's his first super chat ever. Dude, really? All right. So I know I know the Big J is a fan of the devil verse. He brings <laughs> yeah. it up. And yeah, fucking yeah, Lewis yeah. always goes, we're not talking about that shit. Come on, Lewis. Yeah. Let's have some fun here. <laughs> but this, this is awesome. The Big J is chatting us. I'm in a hotel watching. Can I hear the summary of the subject? Tell Gino his special guy is here. (laughs) Because his birthday is, I remember, it's December 7th, but we were hammered one time at the cellar. Never forget. And I go, who's my special guy? He goes, this guy. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. Big J, he's the best, obviously. All right. Wow. Big J, you are the man. I actually saw, I've seen him a few times uh, live doing stand-up, but I went to Burt Kreischer at a minor league ballpark Oh, that's another thing I got to hash oh, out yeah. with you. Fully loaded. That's another thing I got to ha- hash out with you, Blind Mike. Go ahead. Whenever you guys are talking about Burt Kreischer, and I'm always yelling, I like him. <laughs> I'm always yelling at my screen when this happens. Oh, I'm sure he's a, I'm sure he's a nice guy. Yeah. But you guys always say, I mean, this guy is selling out baseball stadiums. He's obviously very popular. And I always go, no. What what he does is he has just the first base line, so it's about a third of this the baseball stadium, and it's a minor league park. So it holds a few thousand people. And you're like, this guy is selling out baseball. It's not Bill Burr at Fenway, okay? I Just didn't so you know. know that, but it's still a lot of seats. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you guys say that, I'm like, well, I got to call into the show right now. Is that true? I actually didn't know that. I just assumed yeah. it was a full stadium. But I, I no, it isn't. But I went and saw this show when they came to Rochester, and Big J was fantastic on it, as was David Tao and a few others. And um, Burt's Burt. What are you going to do? But anyway, <laughs> I'm a big fan of uh, Big J Okerson and – Maybe no I'll... one does crowd work. I'm simping for him, but I'm not. It, no one does crowd work like Big J. No, he's he's fantastic. And 
Maybe we'll uh, we'll get him on WTP someday. Ooh. John Sons a tranny five bucks says Keanu, please don't <laughs> let SJ finish inside. He has that mutant. He has mutant genes, and you'll end up with a daughter who's a shim or a son who's a shim. Jesus. I let him finish inside too. That's so, right in yeah. the house. He's normally, also a mutant. Normally, I have to yeah. go outside when we do it, but she lets me finish. I'm inside gonna be sometimes. celibate from now on. <laughs> I'm gonna be sick. I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear about that ever again. I'm gonna be sick. <laughs> oh, okay, God. <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, don't take this account as a comment on that, but I do have to run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I understood. Uh, we have gone over the, the two hour mark. So, uh, Blind Mike, Blind Mike, that net is where yes. people can go. Yeah, good to see you, you yeah. Mr. Blind Mike's. Thank you, guys. Yeah, check out uh, my YouTube channel, Blind Mike Project. Subscribe. I appreciate it. And uh, good to meet all you guys. Thank you. Love you, Blind Mike. Will you Watch. come on Keanu Cast sometime? I would love to have you. <laughs> oh, anytime. Yeah. Yay, I'll message you. Right, Watch uh, yeah, Blind yeah. Mike Project this Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Watch them do it live. They do a great job. Beautiful. Thank you, guys. Thanks, mm -hmm. Mike. Thanks for hey, being hey, on. Hey, Mike. The only guy who can't see the clock is just like, guys, this has been going on for too long. I'm still doing long this time. shit? Yeah. Get, the fuck, get the fuck out of here. Um, I'm going to run through the rest of the Super Chats, but I do want to let you guys go if you need to go. Uh, Gino, Keanu, KC, any of you guys... We're I don't want to hold you. Good to hang. For all right. A little bit. Yeah. Let me we'll cancel all my bit. seller spots. <laughs> so, a lot of people want refunds. <laughs> Wait, Gino's not here? <laughs> oh, my God. This is crazy. Uh, Don Tubox says, KC, we. Woo! Uh, <laughs> laziest man on Mars, Tubox. NYU BS is hard science. NYU BA is subjective crap. Well, okay. The reason why I said what I said is because I have a bachelor's of science in marketing. So I don't take it all that seriously. Don't you get a double? No. Are you, are you, what's your minor? Um, I actually didn't minor. I found out I was going to minor in communications. And then I found out you don't have to have a minor. And I went, oh, then I just won't. Why would I do that? That's the point. Mm. He's I know take you, more got, credits. Like, you got crazy uh, credentials is, is what I remember from interviewing you. Um, I, I scored very well on the SAT. I'll, oh, I'll say okay. that. I did, I did very well in school. Uh, John sends a tranny five bucks says BABS everywhere are miles apart. BS is specialty like psychology, et cetera. John Bragg's a non-existent BFA. You can get a BFA at any retard school. We got to stop debating college. I mean, does, does any of this matter? <laughs> Get the no. shit. I mean, everyone's jealous. I mean, you, you all can't have a WKU. Uh, anybody can, can get in there. Um, no toppers. You know, live. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's really bad. By the uh, way, a guy in the chat talked about, and this is, God, it's, for a while it was the best trivia question ever because I mentioned I went to the University of Delaware. For a while, the trivia question was, up until three Super Bowls ago, named the last starting AFC quarterback uh, in the Super Bowl, not named Brady or Manning or okay. Roethlisberger. Okay. It was named the last three, not named Brady, Man Manning, or Roethlisberger. And the answer was... The guy with the big ears? What's that? The guy with the big ears? No, it was Flacco and Gannon who both went to the University of fucking Delaware. That's, but think about Gannon was Super Bowl 37. Yeah, it's forever ago. Those three teams had been. Jesus. Wow. That's annoying. I do. Yeah. I, I, I talked to a guy from Miami. With the, Florentine said that uh, he, he was so bad that his ears were so big, he couldn't even hear when the, the rush was coming. <laughs> <laughs> are, you talking about Nick, are you talking about Nick Foles, Big Dick Nick? Jave Fila. Uh, oh, uh, no, that's a kicker. No, no, no. No, no you're thinking Jay Feely. Fiedler was the quarterback after Marino, I think. Yes, yes. Okay. And, and Florentine hated him because he loves Miami. Right. Oh, like we were that talking. Is true. Florentine was on again, was on, I, I said it this past week, and we always tell this story because the NFL is addicting. It's addicting. It's like heroin. And he's a Dolphins fan, like I'm a Chargers fan, like you're a Bills fan. And one year he goes, I'm done with the Dolphins. I'm done. This was like a decade ago. And I'm like, you're not. And to prove his point, he bought a he bought a Panthers hat at like a gas station. I'm like, you're not. Terrible. You're not. And sure enough, opening uh, week, the Dolphins, he told me, 131 nothing. He's like, they're going to be good this year. Right back. You can't. You can't. Yeah. I, I did a similar thing with the Bills. Hope, bro. <laughs> I did a similar thing with the Bills where Thursday night game, they're playing in Miami. This is years ago. 
and I have a uh, rehearsal with my band. So I DVR it. I get home. I sit up. I watch the thing. I got to work in the morning. I'm up until one something watching the Bills fucking lose a garbage game. I'm like, why am I doing this to myself? I'm done with the Bills. <laughs> yeah. I don't care about the Bills anymore. Why do I care about the Bills? I'm not going to care about them anymore. And then they yeah. went ahead and drafted Josh Allen. And here we are. <laughs> Aaron Berg's like that with the Maple Leafs. I'll never forget three years ago. He's like, I'm done with the Leafs. They fucking yep. choke every year in the playoffs. I'm like, you're done until they piss you off again. Oh, and he's like, nope, I'm an Islanders fan. And a week later, they all season, they traded someone. And he's losing his mind. I'm like, but you're an Islanders fan. Go fuck the guy. You just, it's, it's, it's like when you say you're going to quit a team, it's like saying, you know what? This heroin's bad for me. I think I'm done with it. Do, you're not. <laughs> do you remember when we first started dating and you were watching a Chargers game? And I'm not very sporty. I won't lie to you. But he was writing down Chargers. How they don't uh, score in the second half, Carl. And I wrote it on a napkin and she ripped it up. Like, I said, we're not doing this. <laughs> what are we doing? Right it's good, man. It's score. good. This is not, this doesn't seem worth your quality of she life like, to watch these people yeah. anymore. She was like right. Elaine like, with George's toupee. She's like, I don't like this. I'm like, what are we doing? He wrote it on like an old envelope. I'm like, I know nothing of this. We're right. not doing this. And no. I'll tell you something else, Brandon Staley. He's the um, assistant head coach. Assistant head coach is where you fucking hide people you can't get rid of. Oh, my God. Eric the enemy is such a brilliant offensive coordinator. He holds a fucking clip. KC, <laughs> remember for three months. Uh, hey, KC and coach, who will win between Tyson Paul? Uh, Paul, uh, give him give him uh, the respect. But Tyson in his old age, he's got the old man strength. Uh, he can still hit. Uh, you, you, when you got somebody that good, I refuse to believe that some little punk is going to beat him up. So I go team Tyson's, uh, I, I lost too much money on Tyson's comeback. Yeah. yeah Carl, don't bet on those things. Don't no, I'm not going to bet on that. And I'm talking about a long time. Vander Holyfield. I'm talking about oh, 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 a long okay. time ago. You got you. All right. Don says we, we. Dang Lizard 5 Euro says, just realized SJ teaches kids everything about his career and his tests is all the things we heard a million times. Then he calls his mom and jerks off to them. <laughs> then he calls the mom, then he calls the moms and jerks off to them. You know, I don't know if you just realized that or if you're formulating that in your head. Yeah, there you go. Go Bills. Mom. <laughs> my, my wife still has the uh the one that you gave her when we were hanging oh, out. The, pup, the uh, OJ logo. Yes. He did a so, costume change. <laughs> I, I want to point out that John was bragging, this is months ago, about how when he gives tests, he makes the tests himself. He doesn't use the tests that come with the regular. He uh, writes his own exams. He writes his own exams. And now I realize why. Who did I beat at basketball? <laughs> who did I beat at golf who was also. <laughs> yeah. that, that Tom Giassano thing where he says he beat him at golf. It was a single hole where John got lucky again, and he right. runs around. It's like that's how you win at golf. Golf is nine holes or eighteen holes. It's not one hole. But what what a uh, big athletic event did I write for? And it had something <laughs> yeah. to do right. with one off. Uh, how many judges voted that I won in the crazy cabbie fight? <laughs> <laughs> Extra points. Well, that's what I got tonight, by the way. Yeah, he got his ass kicked. We'll talk another time. Oh, good. You got cabbie on your show. Uh, no, I got the. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm breaking down the fight again. Oh, he nice. got so beaten up, dude. I thought it was odd the way that the uh, the. Well, it was. Uh, Bob Levy said it was two cunts fighting over a, a purse. <laughs> I I have to say that when I was into boxing, this is going back a ways. I got very frustrated because it did seem like, and Gino and I have had this discussion about the NFL. Uh, it just it just seems like how are they scoring it this way? It's not even close. You look yeah. at the stats, you, 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 you watch the round, and then you go, wait, all, two of the three judges gave it to that guy? What are you talking about? Yeah, You don't know how to score a, such a debacle. I mean, when when, when you got a, a tough guy is swinging from out here, and, uh, and, 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 then, and then they lock up, and it takes 30 seconds to, to get them apart, and then they both do it again like uh, King Hippo in the punch out. Uh, you can't tell who wins. Uh, but Mud Brooks for two bucks says Casey but did, S Mud Brooks! <laughs> did, uh, did Sonny John take an IQ test on Stern? Uh, it no, wasn't sanctioned. I remember he was... the best. Hmm. It wasn't a sanctioned IQ test. Him and another guy, I forget who, 
Mehmet, went off. Mehmet and um and uh, the, the guy, swinger the, guy. The God swinger damn guy. it, um, Brent. Brent. Brent and Mehmet. They took the IQ test. That was a great uh, episode. Correct. Yeah. And and I've chatted with Mehmet about this, and I can't remember if it was Mehmet or someone else, but um. Someone else took the IQ test with John, but it wasn't a sanctioned thing. So John came back and claimed he had a 136. But <laughs> yeah. the other person, yeah, I know that is laughable. It's one of the funnier things he said. But is the that other much money he had in his pocket, <laughs> the other person who took the test with him then had to take the actual sanctioned IQ test when Howard Stern did it on Sirius years later and got a lower score than they did when they took the one with John. Anyway. It's a did long way to say that John does not have a 136 or anything. Oh, you to that. think? <laughs> yeah, I do think. <laughs> because you're a smart guy. What? What did you ever take the the IQ test, my man? I don't. No, I have not. No. I bet you do good. I, I bet I. I think I did when I was younger, but I don't even remember it. I remember a teacher in high school telling me that he checks all the IQ scores of the students that he has coming in, and he said I did well, and I was like, oh, okay. So I don't know if he's making that up or what was going on. He wasn't naked, was he? <laughs> yeah, he, said, he said, I'll tell you your score as soon as I finish. And I said, all right. <laughs> Should I go faster or harder? Uh, funeral director <laughs> just gifted 10 Casey Armstrong memberships. Funeral directors. Way! Oh, That's do awesome. your next ones because I got to. Yeah, all right. You got five more from Don. Do it again. <laughs> this guy's insane. I miss you, Casey. You got to love Casey. <laughs> What a fun dude he is. He's back there beating up some type of thing. <laughs> Marlin, 45, Maybe. 70, 20 bucks is great crew, Carl. Thank you. Yeah, this is a fun crew. This is, That's by the fun. way, I want to point out, Point Dabble Point was something that we created a few months back. To you know, We talked about how there's so much going on with Centering John. It's so hard to follow. What if we did a weekly roundtable and got everyone caught up on what was going on with John? Yeah. And I thought it was a great idea, but I didn't realize that this would be the vehicle that brought so many different groups of people together to have these shows. And I love that. Like you'll never see this cast of characters. Yes. And we've had so many on here that don't get together on any other show format. It's true. Nor one one <laughs> idiot brought so many lovely people together. Yeah. We can all bond over one doofus. Because <laughs> he's unequivocally a doofus. Just I... making a fool of himself on a daily basis on the internet. Yes. It's incredible. <laughs> John sends a train of two bucks says respect for y'all Sal and Richard are Stern show poison. Oh, really? Hmm. Hmm. I what disagree. Are they to, what are they? Well, they were, I haven't, what are they up to now on that show? I think, I don't They're, know. I haven't really listened. Like, I don't listen to the Stern show anymore, work? but they, they've they taken a backseat. Work. They still work there. Well, I mean, yeah. the, the last straw for me with Stern was, you know, when he was lobbing softballs at fucking Cuomo and, and Hillary Clinton yeah. and said, it, I didn't realize it's like, there's no doubt Ronnie was going to vote for Trump and he would fucking parade him out and R Ronnie wouldn't say he was going to vote for and he'd yeah. shit all over him. And you know Sal and Richard, fucking Sal, a fucking guy with money and Richard, a guy from the fucking middle America, normal. You know that Richard lived in a storage unit before he yeah. <laughs> before he was on Stern. I love right. I can't Richard, imagine what yeah. they're doing now. I think that Sal and Richard, if they had broken off from Howard Stern and started the podcast. Yeah you know back in eight years ago 2016 or something they would have one of the biggest podcasts on the internet maybe they should uh, they're not allowed to do anything though when they work correct yeah yeah no. yeah you're right didn't even think of that it's too bad because yeah. they're fantastic and I, I would follow them brian claude or five bucks says levy and brennan are open up at club in vinylin new jersey yeah. yes are opening up you interested gino fkb that was the uh, that 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 planted the seed of why fucking Brennan lost his mind on me. Oh really? Oh, because they had a club years ago, and fucking yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and the first weekend, it, the, Levy did every couple years. Levy fucking opens a club. What happened? I don't know. Hey, hey, right. hey guys, I love you. I got to break out. But All right. Thank you so much for having me. Pleasure to meet you. Nice and to it's meet you. Good to see you, Carl. I love you, and uh, thank you, everybody. I'll see you soon. So I'm going. Casey, you're the man. Where can people see you tonight? Miss your buddy. Uh, I'm on at nine o'clock doing here, doing the fight uh, and my UFC picks. Love awesome. you guys. Thanks, Casey. Bye, Casey. Thank you guys. See you, buddy. Casey always was that guy on Stern. Like they'd shit on him, but he could be like, he, I love him. He's a good dude. He just yeah. yes. it rolled off his back. He's like, whatever. I'm gay. I gamble too much. It was like, he was always great. 
Oh yeah. They they called him stupid. They called him all yeah. these things. And meanwhile, he's just like, all right, well, I'll just be fucking Miss Howard Stern while you guys are yeah. Yeah. laughing about how stupid I am. Like, we, okay. They used to do a show called The Killers of Comedy with leaving everyone at uh, yep. Caroline's. And I hosted it the first time. Uh, that's when I met him. And I'm like, and that's before you, he's like, he's such an, I'm like, why are you talking to me? <laughs> why are you being nice to me? Why are we doing shots at the bar? Oh, cause you're just a dude. He's great. Yeah. Yeah, he's a, he's a great I guy. I noticed he followed my, this is like months ago, he followed my mom on Twitter, but not me. I rem remember that. Oh, yeah, that? you were telling me that. And and I went, Casey, Casey <laughs> follow me too. So I should have told him that. <laughs> Michael C. with an old reference from WTP. Gina loves the stuttering John. Echo chamber. Yeah, I don't no. get that. Is that uh, is that a bust on me or compliment? That one the, I don't get. The first time you were a, a guest on Who Are These Podcasts or a co-host. I mentioned that people were in an echo chamber and then you oh, brought that up right. about 80 times. Like you said, Carl, an echo chamber. An These echo guys chamber. are in an echo chamber. It's a very good bust on me, which of course I don't get because I'm stupid. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's <laughs> great. I love it. Dave Sarah, he says, uh, FBJ, see you March 22nd. Drugs. Very good. We'll see you March 22nd, Dave. I'm looking forward to that. Drugs. Think, who's, who's BJ? <laughs> FBJ. Brian Johnson? It might be a, a, a is it Bill Jiden? Like Garrett was on a was on a Dave Landau last week, and he had this great line that like who's the, the the point was who's the stupidest doctor? And he goes doctor, and he gets out. He goes doctor Bill. God damn it, doctor Jill Biden. And we were laughing all week about it, calling it Bill Jiden. Probably like not. But it was a shameless plug for Garrett, who's awesome, and Steve. You know that um, the first lady is not an actual doctor, right? Oh yes, we do. <laughs> Even, even though she, she goes has by. a degree, <laughs> got a doctorate, She's smarter than us for sure. Stupid. Yeah, Dave, looking forward to seeing you on March 22nd. Latest man on Mars, two bucks. No, BS no. in marketing, college is stealing from dumb kids. Yeah, no shit. You, you I, I always say, like, yeah, well, so I, I went to college in the 90s and uh, I took a direct marketing course that never used the word email. That's <laughs> how ancient I am, and that's how bad my education was. But I always say, if I could do it over again, I would have never gone to college. And as soon as I turned 22, I would have just made a resume that said I had a BS in marketing. Right. Nobody because checks. You could, you could go, the, Gen Z, they're like, fuck college. We yeah. know everything we need to know from the internet. We know how to make money already. I loved college, but I had a fucking theater major. It's useless. It's absolutely useless. I, I actually well, did use my but... degree I, I became a professional marketer and i did marketing for decades but yeah. i didn't learn anything in college i learned everything working jobs i should have just right. started working at jobs and pretended i went to college it's true right it's fun it's no fine no one would have people. checked up on it my nephew started uh he's he's uh, i don't mean to brag he's at rowan now but but the uh he started college a year ago and he went to a community college and i said 10 years ago i would have been like my nephew's not stupid why and now it's like thank god yeah why waste it yep no that, that is a good move by the way you know also went to a community college he never brings this up but stuttering john melendez what started his first two years at a community college you go don't figure say. i know go figure anthony two bucks says so i guess john's not fucking oh, <laughs> that's correct <man. laughs> that is correct he is not fucking you All don't right. know what you just said <laughs> let's get some plugs in this has been awesome you guys are fantastic we've had consistently 1500 1600 people watching so <laughs> i want to promote what you guys are up to keanu you're doing the keanu cast Yes, it's live Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday uh, at uh, around 8 or 9 p.m. Subscribe, come watch, and uh, Carl, please come on sometime. I will send you some dates if, if you would yep. uh, grace us with your presence. And uh, I'd be happy to. I did come on your show once. Remember, I called in. Yes, exactly. Okay, so now we'll have the- um, <laughs> Didn't uh, go well. The reverse. Now maybe then Stuttering John will call in. You never know. <laughs> oh, you that'd be know. fun. That'd you be fun. Yeah, yes. Might happen. Send me some dates. We'll get that coordinated sure for sure. I sure will, yes. Awesome. <laughs> Keanu C. Thompson on YouTube and Twitter, and you can find all my comedy dates there. So. Uh, you know me. In Hot Water, we did coke the whole show, apparently, according to the chat. I love that. Um. <laughs> And uh, Ray, Ray uh, DeVito is a piece of shit. The way that he, you did his show, made him all that super chat money, and a day later he let fucking Brennan shit on you and your. He's a piece of shit. That's oh, I don't care thought. about that. Ray doesn't. Have, I don't need Ray to have my back on MLC. No, you don't. But you need him to act like a human. He's a fucking cunt. Uh, 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 Fair uh, enough. In hot water. Thank you for having us. Always a good time, man. 
CompoundMedia.com is where you want to go. I recommend I'm buying it. out water anytime. You know you're welcome. Skype in. Be silly with us. Awesome. I do appreciate that. Mentally Challenged John Two Bucks says, just got a full-time job off of with the state. <laughs> I'm sure you did, Mentally Challenged John. I'm sure you did. All right, guys, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thank you so Later, much, Carl. Carl. Later. I love those two. Such lovely people. Always fun talking with them. And uh, what a never a better time to get Keanu on the show. I actually, I didn't even get to all the things I want to talk about now that I'm thinking about it. I got a whole list of things. But uh, we we touched on most of the stuff. We didn't talk about John's failed bit where his audio didn't work. That was a disaster. That was pretty funny if you think about that. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah. John was talking about something else I wanted to touch on. When back in August. So John came back at the end of June to the Dabbleverse with his appearance on MLC for $3,000. And then... He was claiming that he was going to get a certificate or certification to teach science. He was bragging about this nonstop. He's going to get a certification. He's going to teach science full time, no longer be a substitute, be an actual teacher. And he had to take this exam in August. And then that came and went, and he never got his certification. And he pretended he got fired. We know that that's not the case now that he's substitute teaching. So he didn't get fired. So what happened? Did he fail the test? Or did he not even take the exam because he started making money doing the Dabbleverse shows? And especially John, because John's one of these guys who's like, I made $3,000 from one appearance. This will never end. I'll be a millionaire. So I could see John thinking like, well, if I can average $1,500 a day, I'll be doing pretty well. I don't need to go back to school teaching. And so I wanted to talk about that. We didn't get to it. It's okay. What else did I want to talk about? The health concerns. We didn't get to that. We did not talk about John being bedridden on Saturday and then bragging about not drinking alcohol. On Sunday's show, he comes on. He's like, I didn't even have anything to drink yesterday. You were bedridden, John. And his explanation for it, we've all been bedridden before. I, I'll, I'll stop using that word. That's so stupid. We've all been sick and not been able to get out of bed before. And... Usually I'll say I have the flu or bronchitis or whatever it is that's keeping you down. And John's thing was, I don't think I'm sleeping enough. It's probably that. Or maybe I forgot to take my Klonopin that day. Like he didn't know why he couldn't get out of bed. I think he has serious, serious health issues going on right now. And I'm saying that to tell John to get that checked out. I know he is. I know he's seeing, a, well, he says he's seeing a physician, a cardiologist. So I am worried about him. And uh, I hope that he does something to change his lifestyle and to get healthier. It's Stop drinking Insure. Stop drinking all those beers. There's other things you could be doing, John, to change your ways. So I'm definitely uh, rooting for him to get better. I don't think that taking your prescription drugs on your show is a good idea. Washing them down with beer. Bad at karate has been a member for three months. Thank you. You can't take benzos and drink every day. He's not long for this world. Yes. That, that's what I'm saying. I, and I, I talked to Dr. Steve about this because I do worry about John. He's such an idiot. He's, he's not a functioning adult when left to his own devices. Like John's one of these guys. And there's a lot, you probably know these guys who need a wife who treat their wife like their mom. And I know it's funny coming from me. I'm sure this will get clipped, but so there's guys out there who need that to keep them in line, to keep them in check, because if they just live by themselves in a hovel and have no responsibilities in life, they'll just fuck up. They'll just fuck off and fuck up. And that's not a maintainable, sustainable lifestyle for people, especially like Suttering John who's a disaster. And now I'm, I'm the only person on screen. So I'm looking at myself and you're right. My haircut is terrible, but just at the show, you got it Edgar. guys. Thank you so much for, uh, for coming on the show or coming on the show, watching the show with me. I really appreciate it. We'll be on WTP tomorrow, 2 PM for everyone who is on our YouTube channel, Patreon or supercast. Who are these.com is where you can go to find the links to that. And you can watch the show. Our 500th episode will be tomorrow. We got Kindy in studio and a bunch of special guests and surprises in store for that. 
And then I'll be at uh, Comedy at the Carlson tomorrow night. And we'll be doing some live shows and some silly stand up and things like that. So if you're around and you don't have your tickets, get your tickets for that. Looking forward to it. And of course, WTPlive.com will be in Largo, Florida, March 22nd with the guys from ROTC, all the people from who are these podcasts. And looking forward to that. Your cam freezes every 15 seconds, Carol. Please fix. Motherfucker. I'm hardwired into the internet, but I see that it's telling me I'm having some issues. So I'm not sure why that is. I got to get that figured out. All right. Thanks, everyone. Parting in the mush pits of morning radio. And now the show is over now. <sighs> mm, okay. Great show. Good job, everybody. Great job, everyone. <laughs> wife and suck you know, my who cock are these podcasts i don't know i don't get it makes no sense